I'm ready to create. I'm ready to see the next level. I'm ready to see the new paradigm. Is it called fifth edition? That's not like the official name yet. Okay. It's still it's still next. We're still not really sure what we want to call it when it comes out. Well, it ain't gonna be Maybe. sixth edition. <laughs> what Probably could it be? not. Well, no, they could call it. They could call it just Dungeons and Dragons. That's what we'd like to do. Because yeah. the thing is, if you call it like if you emphasize the fifth, is it confusing to new players? Do, right. I mean, how many people actually get really care about it? So I mean, you should take a page from Apple and just call it the new Dungeons and Dragons. It's new always. Well, isn't that isn't the idea that it's an all encompassing? Edition, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I would say Dungeons and Dragons, right? I mean, this is the yeah, this is it's, it. yeah. This is this is like the Metallica album, Metallica. There you go. Some, yeah, exactly, right? I mean, it's supposed to be the essence of what it is. But they couldn't just call it Dungeons. No, no, that because then people would be like, "We're the dragons." We're well, the dragons. Exactly. I mean, the sense then would be that you were holding back on the dragons just to charge later. We're going to release a book later that's dragons. <laughs> dragons. Right now, you guys just have dungeons. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, man. No, it's true, though. I'll play when there's dragons. Exactly. <laughs> and you, you don't want that, that early bird to be like, listen, I'm going to hold off for a greater value. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I know you guys are having this conversation internally. Or, you know, knowing Watsy, they'd release a book that's just the ampersand. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> we're not even at dragons yet? <laughs> really? We're just, we're just This book just simply covers the idea of inclusion? <laughs> yeah. That's not sufficient. What's next? Yeah, yeah. That's not a value. Sorry. Okay. Okay, we're done. So what's up? I mean, how do you, you want to help us learn this new stuff? Because, I, I mean, I've never been out to a play test. I know Mike has seen new stuff. I saw the very early, like the first yeah. draft. Yeah, and, and that's... That's more than I've seen. And I know that people have been at events, you know, at other tabletop-type events and played it. Mm -hmm. And I, I might have a chance to do it at PAX or something, but, I mean, I, I don't have word one. Okay. So I need I need. I've big... lived it, kids. <laughs> <laughs> have you played it? Failower took me through, for, I think my NDA listed on that. He told me it was, but we played through a bit. Was it cool? It was. It felt very old school. It's different, right? It was like we better go back to town and hire some NPCs. We're not going to make it very far into this cave. Oh, you mean in terms of difficulty? Yeah. Yeah, I took I took danger. our group through that. There's danger. Goblin thing too. Yeah. Oh well, here. I, I, I mean, guess. it was the reality was that they, if they picked the wrong cave, it's just game over. That's what I did. Oh. I ran in as if I was fourth edition Benwin. Yeah. And I was going to get all my gear back if a rust monster ate me. Right, and yeah. all your tanking shit, right? So everything's going to be fine. And I did cleave one orc in half. Yeah. But the other four had spears, and <laughs> Kenneth couldn't heal me again unless he drank some orange juice and slept for two days. <laughs> so, felt good. All right, well, here, listen. So you, long story short, you need to educate us. All right, that's, yeah, that's what I'm here for, right? So, All right. So basically, as far as converting your characters go, so I've got, like, these Word docs open. I'm just going to take notes. Actually, hold on. Let's start, let's start even before that. Okay, let's start cool. in the primordial era. Okay, before... My before. name is Jerry Holkins. Okay. And I write under the pseudonym Tycho Brahe, but I am also, for the purposes of this podcast, omen drawn a half-elf cleric, who, uh, of some repute, who operates the Acquisitions Incorporated uh, Adventuring Expedition Organization. Uh, and I'm here with my employees, um, who will introduce themselves at this point. Uh, I'm more of a freelance operative who <laughs> happens to be right now employed by Acquisitions Incorporated. Uh, my name is Mike Rahulik, also known as Gabe. I draw Penny Arcade. And I am Jim Dark Magic. I am also a freelancer. Oh, who am I kidding? <laughs> Let's I am a I am a dyed in the wool employee, a lifer. Oh yeah. But well, you 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 like the medical benefits? I, I need the medical benefits, and I love the toys. That's right. I mean, this you you keep me in like the Harry Potter version of the new axe. Yeah. You you name things, so I'll let you name the axe. But we'll work it out. I'm Scott Kurtz. Otherwise known as that asshole online, <laughs> and I draw PvP, and I play the impulsive dwarven warrior Benwin Bronzebottom, fire enthusiast, danger expert, trap tripper. That's right. And I'm Mike Merles. I'm the senior manager at Watsi. I work on D and D. That's really um, funny. You're Mike Merles. I am. It's so funny. Like I only know your name. Really? Oh, I've, I I know you as a piece of ASCII. 
like huh? text. You're at Mike Merles? <laughs> I am at Mike Merles. I saw a tweet from you today about monsters. Yeah. Well, well, I feel really special now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to know that. The um, And I, I go by Mike Merles online, so I don't really have any aliases to go, I mean, to talk about. And I Do don't you want really to give you one? Jerry's really good at that. Do you, could you give me an alias? Well, here, I, I need to know more about your inherent nature, but we'll get to oh, it. Okay, so this is something I have to grow into. Cool. That's right. Okay. You'll earn it. So, yeah, I basically, I run the, the R&D team, and I'm kind of the, the head for the D&D Next project. Uh, I don't really do a lot of direct design work, but I kind of set a lot of the creative direction and how everything fits together. So you act mostly as a sponge for internet hatred. Basically, yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> like the, the party tank. Okay, yeah, understood. Guy, I go up in the front, and everyone yells at me, and then while I'm distracting internet hordes, the design team skirts around and delivers quality <laughs> gaming products to them. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of my job. All right, well, why don't you tell us about your stuff so, um, that you have? Yeah, so basically um, I've got here on my computer the current draft of uh, D&D Next. Um, I figured we could kind of start with the basic overview of the game, kind of tell you guys like what the major changes are, because you have your you have your fourth edition characters, they're all level 10. Yeah, right. We're going to kind of walk through and convert those over. But obviously a big part of conversion is how is the game going to play differently. It's not just right. what the numbers are, because the way you're playing, it's, it, there are going to be some changes to it. Right, right, right. And like Mike has played, for, fourth edition was his first version. And I, you know, I've played one or another version of D&D since I was like six. So, I mean, I've, I have seen many different iterations of this system. So I imagine we'll be coming at it in a little bit different. Yeah, that's going to be kind of interesting to see how, how your questions shape up. Because yeah. it is. So, oh, yeah, fourth is your first edition, huh? Yeah. Fourth was my first and only edition, yeah. In a way, it's kind of interesting litmus test because the idea is to make it so it doesn't matter what edition you started with, you can just start playing this game and you recognize it. It's not like some completely weird different thing. It's like, oh yeah, this is D and D. Like, there's always going to be some differences whenever you go from one edition to the next. But our goal is they're not their differences more like, oh, this works a little bit better, or there's a new option I could take, but I don't, I don't know if I want to take that. I just want to take the thing that looks familiar. Right. So that's kind of the overriding goal with this. The uh, so in a way, like as far as what's going to be different about the game, probably the biggest change, the one biggest change when you're playing. Is uh, so fourth edition is very encounter. There's no dice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so well, they're actually they're, they're collectible. You have to buy booster packs. Oh, they, wow. the dice say hit Smart. or miss. And so you don't even yeah. want to joke Blind about that. Packs. Blind, <laughs> Blind packs. Blind packs and dice. More d sixes. <laughs> oh, jeez. Now every box is guaranteed to have one d twenty. Exactly. So it that's the one blank. they show on the front. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's the nice one. So the biggest difference is in fourth, it's all very encounter based. Like you, if you're a DM, you build encounters and you kind of put put them together to build your adventure. Yeah, With your players. Everything is very like at the end of the encounter, you rest, get your encounter powers back, you heal up, usually back up to full unless you're near the end and keep going. Yeah, the really big changes we've taken that and we've applied it to the entire adventure or the adventuring day if it's a longer adventure. And the big change there is so instead of having encounter powers that are coming back, though those are still part of the game. The um, we'll kind of get to those as we go forward. The big change with it is to make it easier for DMs to tell to basically tell different types of stories to run different types of adventures. One of the big things we got for feedback for fourth was with each encounter, since there's so much design going on there and there's so many different options and stuff, most fights take about an hour, and that can go even longer. Is Mo, hour. tell me about it. Yeah. So my group. Yeah, So because everyone has to make a lot of choices, a lot of stuff to track, and that was by design because we figured if we're giving you all these encounter yeah, powers. Okay, hold on, that's so interesting because it seems like in a lot of ways that's, that's, one of the, that's one of the things you were trying to fix was to give DMs tools to make encounters. So you're saying that... You gave them the tools to make encounters, and then the encounters became too long and elaborate? Basically, yeah. I mean, it's, it's sort of thing was when you have so, uh, the design and emphasis on encounters, it starts to overshadow the adventure. Ha! They flew too close to the sun. Exactly. <laughs> to the combat sun. Well, All right. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so I think that's what we've seen with fourth is the, the combats take uh, probably, I mean, if you want to have an hour-long fight, that's cool. It's what people want to do, but we don't want to make that the default. So what, what's really, it's about making the game a little more flexible so if you're not really there for the combat or that's not the kind of venture you want to run, you have a little more flexibility in how you want to approach it. So the idea was to go from having an encounter that takes an hour to, if you want, you can run an entire adventure in an hour. Now, if you want to run a longer adventure, you can just do that. You just stack more stuff or you just the way yeah. you design the story. But we wanted to get a lot more flexibility in the game. So what that means is when you think of an adventure, instead of the DM going, here's five encounters and here's how they fit together, you can almost kind of think the process the DM applies to build, building an encounter. You're now applying that to the entire adventure. So you might think... It's a part in an arc that yeah. sort of goes, and then this is this one peak here. Exactly. Yeah, so so the individual fights might be shorter, but when you add them all up, it's like one, you know, it's the same amount of resources from a math standpoint. But you might think as a DM, okay, uh, 
the fight outside is a really easy fight. It's only a couple goblins. That only take a round or two. But then there's the big fight later on against the Goblin King, and that should take like a half hour. And here's like the three waves of guards that show up, and and he, I'm going to stat him out with all these special special ability spells or whatever. So really, it's about letting DMs pick where they want the complexity to rest. There isn't that minimum threshold of complexity that's a bit higher than it was in past editions. So in play, it probably feels a little bit more like say first to third edition. But the back end guts of it are a lot more like fourth, especially for DMs. So the idea is then to give DMs flexibility. So you can start really low with combat and focus more on role play. You can go really heavy on combat and just focus on building all that you know, train features and interesting tactical puzzles. Creatures are a little more complex. Build those yourself or just pick them off the shelf. The, um, so there isn't just this emphasis on here's the encounter, the combat encounter is your main unit. It's the adventure. Then within it, there's different elements you, you, can, you can emphasize. So when you say, like, it's coming from 4th edition, I, I already felt like I could make combats that were simple or really complicated. So when you say, like, the goblin encounter out, the first one is really easy and it's going to be quick. What are you doing to make it quick now? Yeah, I mean, I, so you're basically saying that the floor of complexity is lower. Exactly. Like, I would have, in 4th edition, I would have just said, put minions in there. Oh, sure, right. And so the idea is, like, there are, there are ways to do it in 4th. Like, I don't want to make it like, you just couldn't do it in 4th, yeah. right? But one of the things you may have found in 4th was, like, you could have that quick fight, but if the players take a short rest, it doesn't really have any effect. Like, it has an effect in the story arc, but mechanically, it doesn't have much of an effect on them. Because it's, oh, they, because they, they encounter- just get back up. Exactly, because you get your encounter powers. Like, right. if you got hit, maybe use a healing surge or not. The idea here is that even if you fight like the basically the, the minion goblins, mm-hmm. the um, if one or two of them hit the fighter, he's now a little bit more banged up for the next fight. Or if you use a okay. spell, spells I are see. all on daily refresh now. So if you use a spell, you kind of feel that sting later on. You can't just alpha strike, basically blow everything okay. you have on so the first fight. I you're see. stretching out the experience. Exactly. So you're talking about hit points. I mean, basically, so do you feel like the healing surges, do you feel like that model of healing was a problem? It, it, it seems no. I understand. It had yeah. to be there because of the focus you placed on fights. Do, 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 you, do you feel like that created this problem that you now have to solve? Or yeah, I think in some ways what happened was between healing surges and encounter powers. Like when people would look at their character sheets, there was like two or three pages of just combat abilities. I have a stack of cards in front of me, actually. Yeah. yeah oh, exactly. Right. Or if, yeah, the cards you cut out. Yeah. And so I think what happens is it just kind of nudges people to think if they want to do something in the game. Their first reaction is they look through their cards or they look through their powers. But they don't think about what they want to do. From a character perspective, exactly right. It's, it starts to uh, it starts to kind of push its way up to the forefront because you think of it when people are playing D and D, you only have so much um, processing power, you know, so much bandwidth in your head. So if you're juggling too much mechanical stuff, that might for some players, and I don't know, there's plenty of players this isn't a problem with, but we're kind of looking at the entire spectrum of players. Yeah. Who, yeah. that just starts to crowd out other things they might want to do. Well, I mean, just from a perfect example, I mean, let me, let me look at the way this character is, and I love this character. I don't have any problem with this character. I like playing this character, but. If you look at the amount of real estate this character takes up and understand that I have put each of the types of abilities into a stack, it's still taking up like a quarter of this table, my one character. If I was to look at this character sheet and then I was to say, for example, imagine that I was an alien beast who had beamed down here and I was looking at it. I would say that this is a game about combat. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) What alien is like... Take me to your uh, role-playing groups. <laughs> cool aliens that are awesome. One with great taste. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying that, but, but that's Would you it. like to meet the president? No, no, do no. Have, no. Do you have any gaming groups? Show me, show, me, show me these polyhedrons. But I'm saying, yeah, I would say this is a game about hitting people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's, you know, it's part of the game. And yeah. If people, if you want that to be the game, you, can, you want it to be the game. But I think the key mm-hmm. is for us... When you think of role-playing games, the thing that makes an RPG different from other types of games... Is the role aspect? Yeah, is that you can do anything, right? Like, if you just say, like, if... A lot of games, I think almost every other type of game, you're basically you're looking at what's in your hand with cards, you're looking at what the, your choices or actions are, or whatever it is. In a role-playing game, you can do, you can describe anything, and the DM just uses the rules to figure out how it works. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, as a DM, I already felt like they could do anything. So you're trying to make, uh, like... Codify the fact that they can do anything, no, or make I, no, rules no, no, saying no, no. they can do anything. No, no, no. I think they are actually trying to decodify it. It's a bit, yeah. They're trying to uncodify it. Now I'm just messing with you. But I think that I think that what happens is that players mm-hmm. think in this card way. Mike, you taught me a rule specifically for my group, which is to speed up combat, <clears throat> give them a plus two to their rolls if they know what they're going to do when we get to them. Yeah. Because what was the problem? You get to someone, you're like, all right, you're up. 
Brian, you're up. And he goes, uh, uh. Yeah. Right? And I would give them a plus to their rolls if they had their card picked out. So they can yeah. choose anything. And but no that was the whole game, was them. Everyone is not paying attention to what's happening or participating. They're looking at what they're going to do next. The game was most fun when they would kind of break free of that, and we would stop necessarily just kind of adhering to whatever their cards could yeah, do. I mean, they could have done it. Yeah. Right? But... But this is imagine, imagine like in the UI of this game, if these are all the buttons. I mean, in, in, so in order to in order to think about something outside of this construction, the, the first thing you're going to look to is what's on the table. And what sure. was your other rule? You made uh, skills a free action to encourage them to do more skills. Yeah, I did. So you were heading this direction anyway, Mike. You just don't know it. <laughs> you were making D and D next, and you didn't even know. Well, no, it. but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that already a DM could do whatever they wanted. Yeah, yeah like yeah. I, I didn't because it's a role playing game. Yeah, I mean, when I say I played Fourth Edition, I played like every DM. I played my version of Fourth Edition, right? Right. Like I had, we had so many house rules, and you know, you like like Scott's saying, it. shit that I just came up with on my own. Yeah. I mean, my 3D planets are behind you on that table. Like, we did crazy stuff. Like, I already felt like I could do whatever I wanted with these rules. So I don't understand why I need a new set of rules that I can do whatever I want with. He's right, Mike. Pack this shit up and get out of here. <laughs> I'm listen. I'm coming. I've never had to deal with another edition. I don't understand why I need another edition no, exactly. of something I can do whatever I want with. <laughs> no, no, exactly. You need to. You need to be sold on it. That is perfectly yeah, exactly. reasonable. Yeah. No. Because yeah. Uh, no. That's you want. You want me to get all new books and rules, right? I mean, that's I mean, well. That's the thing, right? I mean, you could. See, yeah, sure. I loved if everyone just bought everything new every month that came out. But well, honestly, at the end of the day, if you're playing, if you're playing fourth and you enjoy it, there's no reason to stop playing, right? I mean, okay. With the new, one of the things with with the new edition is we don't want people to. I don't want people to feel like. If, if you're playing the new edition, you're not playing D and D anymore. That you're being like left out in the cold and all that. Because I just say I, I, because there are going to be plenty of people who I mean, there are people who still play first edition, original D and D. Sure. Because I think a lot of it is as DM, you you're creating stuff, and if you find a set of tools that works for you, why? I mean, obviously, it's great if we can make a game that you look at and go, okay, this is great. I want I want to move on to the new edition because it's doing what I want, and that, that's a challenge we face, right? Yeah. Because we've got all these different audience people who want, you know, different things out of D and D. The um, so in some ways, that's the real challenge. But at the end of the day, it's really about playing the version of the game that makes you the happiest. Because a lot of the stuff, and this is the thing, that I think the big thing about D&D &D is since every group is different, when we talk about these things, we can only really, I as the game designer guy, can only talk about general trends. right? This is, this is generally what we see in the audience. This mm -hmm. is kind of like the bigger picture thing. But that doesn't mean anything when you look at in, in individual gaming groups and, tab and tables. Because everyone's experience of the game is different. I think that's what makes D&D &D great, is it yeah. isn't just the same thing for everybody. And if, if Fourth's working for you, I mean, that's... I mean, Fourth's a great game, right? So I don't think there's any sense that you, know, you have to move on or, you know, or, or you're making a mistake or something like that. So if I want to take my Fourth Edition Jim Dark Magic and make him a Next Edition Dungeons & Dragons character... That's that's the goal here, right? Uh, yeah, that's basically what we're going to look at uh, okay. converting over. So, I, actually, I, I have a question for that. So, when you think about fourth, like, what do you think? Are there any specific things in the game that you're not happy with, or that you have like house rules and wish you had bigger solutions to? I'm just curious to see, like, when you're playing the game. Uh, like, for what, what for me as, yeah, a DM, as a DM, my my biggest problem I would say was that uh, by the time they reached level twenty or so, mm -hmm. I had. A very hard time, I felt, challenging them. Well, the party was, there were, it was within the rules of the game. Yeah, 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 it was a pantheon by that point. Yeah, I mean, I, I could definitely make up stuff and <clears throat> and tweak rules and and cheat <laughs> to hurt them, um, you know. And by by level twenty, I really did have to cheat, like, mm -hmm. to hurt them. Um, I felt like if I were to just use the math, boy, they yeah. were going to kick my ass every time in an encounter. Interesting, yeah. So they to, were bad. They were they were bad news bears. I mean, my group come came from card players. Like they like they like having cards and they like thinking about synergies between cards. And you know, it's one thing to think about synergies in a deck, but this is a group of five card players thinking about synergies between five decks. Yeah. I mean they were setting themselves up for attacks and powers that were just insane. I mean it was like it was like five tournament magic players. That had created a, a single five-headed meta deck. Yeah, it was spooky. And so there, you know, by level twenty, I had sort of stopped doing as many encounters, and we were playing a lot more where we would play nights that 
you know, we're almost all role playing. Okay, cool. You know, so in some ways, okay, so in some ways, you're kind of like the system had served its purpose, and you'd kind of move beyond it in some ways, like in terms of what you're thinking of, like for the session. It wasn't you weren't leaning on the numbers to get things. No, going. I would say what I was leaning on was the lore. And, uh, you know, I loved the books that would give me, you know, locations and NPCs and hooks for ideas and stuff like that. And I wasn't relying so much on the math anymore. So, so that's something where, I mean, even if, even if you look at next and think it's just terrible, you don't want to play it. I mean, a lot of the stuff, one of the things we want to be able to do as we go forward, because we know not everyone's going to come over, right? So as we're doing products, whatever else we're writing about, a lot of that stuff is still just going to be the lore of the Dean. Of Dean. Yeah. You know, it's, it's still going to be stuff that, you know, if you go to the store, you can still pick up adventures or whatever, or just source books on different locations or places. Uh, so, so so I think in a lot of ways, even if the rules didn't, don't make sense to you, if anything, we're going to be emphasizing more the story end of things and okay. the world building and stuff. The Because uh, I think that's pretty common in fourth is one of the things that happens is, since it is so driven by the mechanics and character building and, and the combinations between characters... That what you just described is something that I think happens qu- quite often. Mm. That it's just one DM against five players. Really, it's a five. It's a five on one game. Yeah, and that's in some ways like a next. We're trying to address that. I mean, it's it's a tricky thing because you don't want to tell people like in the new edition your character will suck, right? Like you just you know you're half as powerful as you used to be. But right. the bigger picture is trying to make it so that those combinations, like especially as encounter powers, you can't pull them off as as often as you were able to before. That so you're not just getting maybe everything back and being able to do it again. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you're you, essentially you're going in under the hood of the combat economy. Exactly. Right. I mean, you're you're trying to alter the the ratios. Yeah, it's it's the, of those abilities. Yeah, it's, it's 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 the tempo that if you have something that's a real that you can go nova, you can't say through a combination of encounter powers just nova every single fight. Mm-hmm. You've got to kind of pick your moment to shine. So I'd be kind of curious to see how that kind of, like, you know, as you kind of look at the system, if that, any of that kind of speaks to you. But, yeah. the, but we're definitely, we want to, I mean, it's part of it is getting more towards story and less toward mechanics because of that, because there are mm-hmm. so many different additions out there and people have different, different preferences. So so we want to talk about your specific characters? or do Let's you do just, it. Yeah, okay. Who wants, to, who wants to be first up? So this is going to, I got to kind of warn you up front, this is going to be a little experimental because right now. It's basically a huge word doc, right? Yeah, oh, a huge is, is would be a generous uh, way to describe it. It's a number of smaller word docs that go up to fifth level. So oh, I see. Now you guys are tenth level, and so the thing is, I have all my design guidelines here, so I can start doing some stuff for higher level stuff, stuff for stuff. The uh, that's the wrong one. And, <laughs> sorry, it's technical difficulties. I'm opening up a few files here. Man. So who wants to go first? I mean, Omen I should probably start. I mean, he's the boss, right? I agree. Yeah, let's give it a try. And also, I want to know what it means to be a, a D&D Next cleric, because one of the things that I thought was kind of cool coming into fourth mm-hmm. from previous versions was just the idea of a healing strike. Yes, exactly. Yep. Like, I mean, it seemed like the healing strike was designed to create a Was new, that new to fourth? The idea that you could hit and heal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Previously, you were doing your group a disservice if you didn't dump all of your spells into heals. It was your whole job. Because remember, without Second Wind and without these other mechanisms for healing, the cleric was it. Oh, okay. So their job was so important. It, it's it's like, you know what I mean? It's like when you play your druid mm-hmm. in a raid. <clears throat> yeah. Your job is just the green bars. The cleric... If I did damage, I got in trouble. Yeah. See? Yeah. And it was the same thing. The cleric is there exclusively to manage green bars. Yeah. Okay. And so the idea that I could manage a green bar while lowering their red bar sure. was a revolution. And so, I mean, especially because, I mean, in some ways, like for a warrior, I liked the tanking mechanics. I, I like that it, I like that I could try to, you know, that warriors could pull heat off of people. But at the same time, you know, the rest of their attacks, they, warriors are wizards in a lot of ways, just mechanically speaking, yeah. right? And then that's, that's a return to an older style of play to go back from that. And I just, I wonder what that means for... I'm guessing this is the part of the podcast where he says that they got rid of Healing Strike. I'm just... Yeah, no, I've, I I feel very confident <laughs> that I'm about to receive a letter in the mail from... <laughs> actually. From yeah. the general... <laughs> and the, and that's, you know, that's a good segue into, uh, into Healing... Uh, uh, well, the conversation about Healing Strike... I want to enter into a dialogue about healing strikes and how they don't exist. <laughs> so, actually, that's actually one of the things which is nice about the new the way we're approaching the system app. Is since we're assuming people want to be able to do that, 
we can build that into the game. Okay, so tell me what that means. <laughs> it means that he's going to go into his word doc right now and go, <laughs> we need to add a healing strike. Right. <laughs> healing strike, you can do it every turn. <laughs> so we'll get healed. So the, the, the big change in healing is it's not encounter-based, it's, it's daily. Like, you know, if you cast a healing spell, it's gone. But for clerics, e! yes, but for clerics <laughs> you get uh, Channel Divinity is now purely healing. You can just use it. So Channel Divinity back in the day was uh, Turn Undead, mm -hmm. 4th edition. It lets you access a different power base. It's a power thing. source that you can exactly. invest in different <clears throat> things, yeah. So what we did, we decided uh, since clerics iconically heal, every cleric just gets a healing ability. And now if you want, if, depending on what god you take, you can swap that out. If you're like a uh, cleric of the god of assassins, you don't heal, and you can choose something else. You do the opposite of healing. Yeah, exactly. Or hurting, yeah. as it is sometimes okay. called. But that's kind of like the, the, the standard like onboard option, you know, kind of when you buy a car, like you, you're getting a radio, right? So yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, the same thing, if you want to swap it out, you can swap This is it. not aftermarket. Yeah, exactly. And then what, really from there, it's just a matter of, typically speaking, if you want to attack and heal, your heal is about half what it would be if you spent your entire action. But we're basically giving you that option to choose. Do you want to be more of a fighting cleric where you're fighting and healing, or do you want to be more of a support cleric? Because that's one of the things we found in, in well, so If Somebody wants to do that. Exactly. I, don't, I'm, just, I would never say exactly. that that was not true. Yeah. Um, but I don't. Yeah, so exactly. So it's just it's one of the big things with, with Next is saying people want to play classes in different ways, so we can just design it to meet that. And I think that's been one of the big things we've been learning the past couple of years. One of the nice things of having the different editions and the feedback we've been getting is you just you get a pretty good sense of what, like, if people say they like playing a cleric, they mean different things. But this is all really about saying, okay, well, what are those things? And how can right, we right, right. So you're saying that but healing is a daily ability, but you're saying that I can still hit and heal? Yeah. Tell me how that would work. So uh, it actually, it's pretty straightforward. So you can imagine if you have a healing spell. So here, you know what? I'll actually pull one out as an example. I can just read it from this file here if I can find it. The um, so let's see, or of course, let me guess. Like this would be the punchline. It's actually not in this file. Here we go. So there's a spell called Healing Word. It's okay. right here in the file. Right, uh, I have the old version here, the old great version. You're about to fuck up. <laughs> so uh, right now, <laughs> basically is okay. Oh, and this actually goes back to a, 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 another big change to the mechanics of the game. Yeah, this is all about trying to streamline things. Oh, so it's not move minor no standard. Paper. It's just action and. Move. It's all in your head. So you only have one action. Action and move. Yep, action and move. Interesting. And okay. So again, again, it's it's about economy, right? Exactly. Oh no! <laughs> because you guys have to make a whole new T-shirt. <laughs> no, no, no. Move minor standard no longer applies. But 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 essentially, what we're talking about is <laughs> you, you had move, Quick, which was the classic to one. Make an action yep, right? shirt. <laughs> you had move, and you have and you had your standard action, and so that's what you have now. Yeah, basically, yeah. But you also had the end change portion with that minor action. Yeah, so, and, and so the big reason for that change, and you guys get talked about this a little bit earlier, it's, it's so people focus on doing one thing. So it's your turn, what do you want to do, you do that. That's your action. It. Yeah, exactly. One of the things we found with minor actions was, and actually it was kind of interesting watching, because we, we have like this, uh, we, do, we bring in people sometimes to play D&D &E and you like watch them and see how it plays out. People, they have minor actions. They think, well, what should I do with this? And you'd see oh. players kind of stop and think, well, what should I do? They get right paralyzed. Do yeah, because it's, it's a resource, right? Like, you figure if you're playing a game, you have resources, you spend them all, because you, you're going to lose it if you don't use it. So okay. it, it ended up, so what we did, is, so in, instead of saying, hey, everyone gets a minor action, we just said, I can, the spell's right here, right? When you cast a spell, you heal someone, and you can also make an attack or cast a second spell. So as a player, ah. though, like, if it comes to my turn and, and you know, we, we open a door... And there's goblins, right? Is it an action to draw my sword? Nope. And that's something we said, too, is actions are pretty much, like, the main thing you do. So the DM, and we tried to make an exhaustive list, but just gave a lot of examples. Like, things like drawing your sword, talking to somebody, even, yeah. like... All oh, those oh, things. Those are end, minor actions. All the yeah. end change. Well, no, the, no, no, now they don't exist. Okay, so... I say, I come in and I say, I draw my sword. That's not a... There's no rule associated with that. No, that's role that. play. Yeah. Right? Okay. Because it's kind of neat when you think, like, from a game balance perspective, it doesn't really matter if you have your sword out or your sword's in your hand. Like, it's just, you're going to attack with your sword. When we do, like, the, yeah. uh, the map on the game, we don't account for that. Yeah, so can, can I, so does that mean that I can draw and sheathe my sword an unlimited number of times per round? Mm. That's up to the DM. <laughs> so, yeah. You're just in the corner. <laughs> well, because that's... <laughs> oh, and you're going to go blind. <laughs> all right. All right. I just I know that question is coming up. I get it. No, but that, but that's one of the things, right? and this is where I mean RPG RPG design is so interesting, right? Because you get these things where if you try to make a rule, if you try to make a rule of something, someone's going to figure out a way that where it doesn't make sense. And if you don't exactly. make a rule, then well, but right. at least you can say, look, it's, it's it's up to the DM's common sense, right? It's kind of leading a little bit more on the DM to say you're kind of well, yeah. I mean, imagine a situation like this. Uh -huh. So imagine that like like pull starting a lawnmower or something like that. 
Like you pull it. It's just that would be in this. It would be a no. It would not be an action. But imagine if I had some kind of a device that generated a small amount of magical charge per minor interaction. So now I can do that an unlimited number of times on this magical device. Each time I stroke it, each individual stroke doesn't count in the system. What the fuck? are you as talking result, about? No, as no, a result, no. I can unleash. <clears throat> untold magical power each turn because charging and arming the device does not is not accounted for in the, the rules DM should, result, the yeah. dm should never have given you that device but no this is a better example you have an archer and the archer's like oh i just shot that fucking goblin bam he's dead i'm gonna shoot another goblin and as a dm I'm like whoa you need hey, to hey, notch hey. an arrow buddy where'd you get that arrow from where that you know you need to take some time to notch that like Right? With that, I could, as a DM, I could be like, your action isn't to shoot another arrow. Your action is to draw and notch another arrow. Well, it depends. Yeah, it, it depends on how you're looking at it as the DM, right? So, like, if the player's action is just to, to shoot a goblin, that's his action. He's done. You assume everything else that goes along with it is just he just does that as part of trying to shoot the goblin because he's rad at shooting arrows. Yeah, exactly. It's his job. Yeah, and okay. unless he had a special ability that said I can shoot twice, he's used his action. Okay. Now, as a DM, it's kind of back to the lawnmower example. Like, so yeah, most of the time, if you, if you want to, like, I want to go use the lawnmower as my action, right? You just you start it up and start pushing it, right? But the DM might, if the DM decides, or there's some hard adventure, says, oh no, you got to pull it, and nothing happens. And now it becomes yeah, more go. dramatically appropriate. So he says, no, now I have to figure out how to fix the lawnmower, right? Or it's like, you know, a classic car movie thing. You get behind the wheels of a car, and you go to start it. Most of the time, you don't even consider it, right? If you're watching, like, Sleepless in Seattle, and the guy gets in his car, <laughs> he just drives away, right? Yeah. But if he's getting chased by Jason Voorhees, <laughs> and the car doesn't work, now his action is, shit, i got to get in my car, right? Or i got to okay. go run off or try to fix the car. So a lot of it's kind of given that dramatic tool to the DM to say, like, maybe the archer goes to grab an arrow out, and that's where, like, you know, whatever. There's sure. Something weird's going on. So the idea was... of an action is much more ambiguous now. That's like... right. It's yeah. much broader. Yeah. Yeah. And it incorporates what we would consider, like, the the prepara- preparatory exactly. aspects of it. Yeah. It kind of gobbles up some of the things before. And action after. and move. And it can be in any order? Yeah, exactly. And you, okay. can, you can actually you can that break up. That is very up, interesting. You can break up your move with your action. So if you could say if your speed was 30 feet, you can move 15 feet, fire an arrow, and then move 15 more feet. So you could sort of dodge around corners, the um, things hmm. like that. Okay. So, it, so it's just you have a more flexibility. Now, in most cases, as a player... Like, if you want to cast a spell, that's an action, and the spell just tells you what happens. Right? That, so those aspects are baked into the, uh, the abilities exactly. themselves. Yeah, exactly. So if you have a special ability or something, it'll just say, as an action, do X, Y, and Z. Okay. So, there yeah. we go. Okay. So you've all, you've uh, essentially, on a power-by-power power basis, you can alter the economic valuation of the ability. Exactly. And that goes kind of back to the cleric. So instead of saying, hey, everyone has a minor action and clerics use it to heal. That's right. What happens is, like, the fighter doesn't really use his minor for, unless it's, like, drawing a sword or something like that. But you could argue... Oh, I see. You know, if the fighter wants to attack with a sword and then drop his sword and pull out a mace or something like that, or, if, you know, fire an arrow, then pull out a sword when the orc gets close, like, sure, that's fine. We don't really... We don't need the minor action hanging over everyone's head. We to describe that. But what, exactly. but what, what they might have what they might have done is used a minor action instead to mark targets and things like that. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we get over to exactly. Vinwin. Yeah. But you're saying on mine, healing word is an ability that in the new paradigm would allow me to use an action to hit and cast a spell as a exactly. part of that. And that would that be, in, in this paradigm, would that be considered a daily... Yeah, so this one, would, this the version I read to you now is a spell. So you prepare it. So basically, it's a daily power. Oh, I see. I and see then, that. and then within <clears throat> your channel divinity, you can use that a number of times a day based on your level. So when you start at lower level, I think you can use it once per day, and then it goes up. Now the important thing about healing too, yeah, so you can use it once per day with first level. Right. Uh, one of the key things for healing too is the um, second wind is no longer for use during combat. Ha! But when you take a short rest, you have hit dice. Basically, it's a pool of dice you can roll. Per level? To, yeah, exactly. To, to heal your character. So so what will happen, what I've noticed in playtesting is, like, so I'm playing a fighter right now. Uh, if I get beaten up by whatever, I, I charged a bunch of skeletons, got, I was down to five hit points, but the cleric doesn't need to wear what healing need during the fight. If we know I'm safe during the fight, wait, I can just hang back or, yeah. or just use a bow. And then when we rest, I can spend my hit dice to heal up without having to use a spell. So oh, okay, so it can happen in a fight. Yeah. But player characters still have a, a reservoir of hit points exactly. that they can boost back up. But the, but those dice are based on um, is it based is it per class? Uh, it's based on class. You get one per level, and then you you add your con bonus to it when you. When you're I see. So warriors are still rolling d tens or twelves to a, a wizard's lower dice. Exactly. Yeah. So the idea is really for cleric healing is really for use in combat. 
it's kind of rare that you use it I see. spell all the time. <clears throat> well, again, so there, you used the word iconic before, and I suspect that that wasn't on accident. I mean, I, I, so is, are you, there's a distillation process here oh, yeah. that has to do with what a class is capable of, like in terms of play style. You're trying to get those differentiations back because that, that went away, especially as you climb in levels. Those differentiations oh, yeah. were obliterated. We're looking yeah. at level a level twenty rogue, you know, he was a wizard. Yeah. <laughs> he was a he was a wizard with knives. Yeah, no, th- th- that is a big part of the game is making the classes feel really vivid. So right now, because you can't help. I mean, this is this is one of the things, right? I mean, obviously, by the time you're twentieth level, that there's something else holding that party together than mechanics. If you've played to 20th level, it's you're not just playing it for the system anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and that's a good thing because it starts to the wheels start to wobble. It's like it's like that 60 mile an hour <laughs> out on the highway like you can feel some tension in the axle, right? And I think that to a certain extent you want to be well, you know, I, I can't say this is this isn't a generality. I'd say this is what I want to do when I come to the table. And it's, it's you know it's obvious like I knew that this party like when we first started making characters I knew that this party needed a, a cleric I made a cleric with and there was no hesitation like what I want to do is I want to be useful to the party yep but I think as a general thing people want to be useful to the party in their own way and I think that that is something that got stolen. To a certain extent, yeah. I, mean, I think when you do something, you want people to go, "Oh, geez, thank God we brought we brought the thank, rogue." Exactly. Yeah. You know? exactly. exactly. Yeah. And and that has been a huge <clears throat> part of class design is building those things into classes where each class can do something that no other class can do, and they do it in a way that, like what you just said, is exactly what we want. Where the other players at the table, I wish I, that ability is cool, or I wish I had that. Or, right. 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 Yeah. Or I don't have it, but I'm glad that we have it at the table. Exactly. Right. And I think that's where, like, when you say, like, the spell design we just talked about, is about rolling the core system back. It's a little bit simpler. It's a little more streamlined. So the classes so that, could be a little meatier. Exactly. So you, you call some of that uniformity yeah. as it goes up. Yeah, because I think that's one of the things that people like about role-playing games is the, fe- the feeling that their character is really unique. The role. Class. I mean, yeah, again, exactly. it keeps coming back to the first word, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you know, in, in next, you're going to be the bash people and, and, uh, and heal. or And that's one of the things we added, too, was um, so clerics get minor spells. Those basically your at-will abilities. Okay, so, so but, but not to be confused with the minor action. Exactly. You're saying I have, minor, I have minor spells that can be used in the same way that we think of as at-will abilities. Exactly. Give me an yep. example of, it, sure. of, a, of what we would call a minor spell. Actually, so this is something I can bring to the table in every fight yep. if, I, if I need to. So here, let me grab one of my files here, and I think it should be in the spell. I know there is one, for instance, we have the, the Sun Domain, and the Sun Cleric can blast people with radiant. Uh, okay, so you sort of laser cleric yeah. stuff. That... Yes, exactly. You can still play a laser cleric. The uh, And this is kind of ties it to the domains. So if you take the Sun Domain, you get an at-will that lets you just you know, blast every round. If you're a war domain, that's more of a melee guy. Yeah. Um, you're at will. It's not really. It's it's more u- utility than combat focus because the idea is if you're a warrior cleric, you've got. A well, you're. Yeah, yeah. You're not in the yeah. front. I mean, you're there to support. Yeah, exactly. So it just depends on what kind of cleric you want to play. The domain plays a much bigger role in determining what your your, your character looks like. You can almost think of domain as being the equivalent of build in, in fourth. Yeah. So the. Um, so give me an example, like <clears throat> of this of this this war domain cleric. Like, yeah. what am I kicking out to help my my people? So as a war cleric, so one of the things we do with the core cleric class is you, um, the cleric doesn't start with any armor or weapons. It's by your domain. So the war cleric is wearing... Oh, oh, so they're all different. Yeah, exactly. Huh. So if you're, play, if, you're, if you're a war cleric, you're wearing uh, heavy armor, which gives you really good AC. You're wielding uh, martial weapons. So like basically, you're, like you're a fighter. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, this is a trained, like a warrior. Yeah, exactly. But instead, obviously, instead of getting the fighter's expertise dice, and we'll get to those when we talk about the fighter, you're, you're getting your spells to compensate. But compared to other clerics, you're going to have a much higher AC, and you're going to have a much better uh, attacks in melee. So the, um, and let's see, I'm actually reading the file right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the other thing you get, too, is um, so the way cleric spells work, you have your spell slots you can expend to cast your spells. So back, just, so that, that's from way back, right? Exactly, yeah. That's from, like, third. It's a little bit like the third, third edition sorcerer. So there you have your go. spell slots, then you have your spell list. So as a war cleric, you get spells like Crusader Strike or Battle Psalm. You always have those prepared. So you don't have to go through the spell list and specifically prepare those spells. But I do have spells that I can specifically prepare. Exactly, yep. And those are your other things like Cure Light Wounds or um, Not Grease. That's a wizard spell. Yeah. The, um, I can kind of scroll it up. We don't have two. We have like a, about ten spells. But things like uh, Bless, 
Uh, the classics. So the, exactly. But those would be prepared. Those would not be considered at wills. Exactly. Yep. So, the, yeah, the idea is that in play, you feel really different. Um, Even if you could make a party of clerics and they would... Yeah, that's one of the things we wanted to do. Huh. Is, so if you're playing a cleric of shadows, you feel a little more like a thief. I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not a rogue, but you feel a little bit more like one. Kind of like the battle cleric, you're wearing heavy armor. And you yeah, I mean, those, those almost sound more like templates to me. In some ways, they are. They're kind of like the second edition. Um, if you played second edition with the spheres system it had, yeah, where, yeah. When you built a cleric, you just had these giant lists of spells, and you custom built every cleric. It's a lot more like that. I mean, it's not it's custom because we will we'll build the domains for you. And our goal is for DMs and in the, the Dungeon Master's Guide. We, you gotcha. Know, we'll so these at wills, generally speaking, are not going to be like the at wills that we know that are basically sort of elaborate attacks that. I'm pulling off every round. It, so the, the key is uh, when you use the word elaborate, because what we want to make sure is that the at-wills are fairly straightforward. Yeah. Because so, we don't want to give you a lot, so, so it's easier to manage. You only have like a couple of them. Yeah. And they're usually, we want them to be very distinct, so it's pretty straightforward. You're not spending a lot of time looking at them and trying to figure out which one you want to use. You just think, oh, hey, I need to blast this guy for as much damage as possible, I use this one. Yeah. Uh, I need to help my friend, I use this one. So it's very distinct choices. So rather than having, say, two different attacks, it may be... One's against fort, one's against reflex. Not really. Sure. You kind of have to a couple rounds in. You figure so out which one you should. Attacks versus fort and reflex. I assume those are gone. Yeah, it's all just um, it's it's either a saving throw or an attack against AC. Okay, and again, that's to speed things up. So yeah, if you're yep. making an attack, it's just AC. Yeah. So. Does it, it on, on the table? Does it actually speed things up? Because it seemed to me like the attack versus fort was designed itself to speed things up. In yeah. some ways, I guess. I guess only in cases of a save. Yeah. So one of the things we did, we make sure the saving throws exist only on daily powers and and at will powers. At least right now, this is where I'd like to end up. If at will powers are always attacks in summer class, so you're only wearing with saving throws when you're kind of kicking in a more powerful ability. And that's there we go. We don't mind if it takes a bit longer. I think people like it if you throw a fireball that it does take longer because that's kind of a cool and it moment. feels different. Exactly. Right. On the table. Exactly. Like now, oh, now that saving throws coming out, this is some real stuff. Ex yep. Precisely. And so that's something where, and that's something you might see too, like in the um, for the Warlocks encounter powers, where, okay, if you boost it to an encounter power level, now it's requiring a saving throw, things like that. An attack that might be like a fire bolt, when you boost it, it's now a fire blast that explodes. So everyone has to make a reflex save. So <laughs> is most of it going to, uh, in terms of complexity, going to these domains? Or is there a, de is there a deity aspect? Maybe that'll, maybe that'll come in. Um, specific setting supplements, yeah, exactly. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you can imagine the player's handbook that'll just be domains, and then for the yeah, for a world book, be they might say what domains a specific goddess is available yeah. for. I think what we do actually for the world books that, that we do, uh, we'll actually have domains for the gods. So it's not just like the the, the sun domain. If you're in Forgotten Realms, you'd be like, oh. okay, here, because then what we can do is we can go back to like the world war and, and like that stuff and be very specific about. Like, I don't know if you guys want to use this, but I just created a design for Orcus, the evil mm -hmm. whale wizard. <laughs> he shoots acid out of his blowhole. Which I think is really dangerous. Okay, yeah, especially. Um, and he has a skull. So a ranged attack. He has a skull on him. So something to consider. Something to, I, it's something to put in there. You know what? You bring that want. back with you. Okay, um, I, sure. we'll put I would workshop that, but um, I think it could be. Big. I would put copyright Gabriel. On oh yeah, you want to make sure you grab that before we steal copyright. it. Copyright. So. There you go. Mike Krahulik. I got to put the legal name on there. Yeah, yeah. So that they can't take it. Okay. Two thousand. Well. 12. I am intrigued by some of those distinctions. And trademark on the acid. TM. That's gonna, those, those are going to be... Trademark, copyright. Those were interesting choices to me. Especially, uh, I especially like we had to segue into healing because that's more or less my job. But that sounds pretty dangerous. Like, especially compared to the way things are now. Like, it seems like combats are designed to be a little bit more yeah. to the wire. Yeah, there's the design to be a little. Well, it's kind of like a, what we want to do is if you get into a fight, there's an after effect the rest of the, the rest of the adventure <coughs> until you can camp for the night, and then yeah, it's a little it's a little more deadlier. I mean, one of the things is that um, like we were talking about earlier, if if we err on making the, the combat deadlier, I think that actually will help us get the end of the day the game that more, you're looking for exactly more balanced draft because you know players are always going to be clever. They're going to come up with ways to get combos and stuff. Absolutely, so we want to aim so it's a little bit deadlier, and then the DM can just decide. Like, one of the things we want to be able to say is in the DMG, like, if you keep kicking your players' asses and you don't mean to, here's some of the changes you can make to the system. Make it a lot right. more flexible, give DMs a lot more tools to, to mess around with things. I like the idea of it being more dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I'm totally ready for that. I like there being actual consequences. Yeah, well, here, let's talk, about, let's talk about consequences for Ben Win Bronze Bottom. I want to know what these consequences are. Are you talking about expertise dice, or is that, yes. are we getting ahead of it there? No, this is this is actually the new big thing for fighters. So, see, so again, so for fighters, so this is another one yep. of these iconic things where you're trying to say, hey, this is something that these dudes get. And when you say fighters, I mean, can I derive from that that you still have a sort of like in the same way that you had power sources in four? Are there going to be different types of fighters 
the warrior being one of them. Yeah, I mean, sort of like, like you know like, what I mean, like, like paladins and rangers. Or no, like that, or? Not, not so much like that. Like in the same way that you had like a leader role, mm-hmm. and their role was to heal. But you had different power sources that allowed you to make different types of things. Because for me, one of the biggest, one of the just the coolest ideas in four, and I'll be sad to see it go. But I, I guess I, I have to see how you would try to implement it if you wanted it to come back. I loved the warlord. Yeah, I loved the idea that there was a martial leader who could do a healing, essentially heal, you know, in game terms, but it was actually a sort of a morale thing. Exactly. I loved the idea that there was another type of leader that was not, it, w- it wasn't about prayer, it was pure valor. Yeah, it, so when we talk about the warlock versus the wizard, I'd like to have, we haven't gotten to the, to the warlord yet, or even any of the other healers like the druid. Or but the but do you consider, in your in this new thing, I mean, do you consider the warlord, a, do you consider the warlord a core class? I would like to make it a class. Now, one of the questions we have is, like, if you think of yourself as being a leader, is it better to be, like, I'm a wizard and a leader, or am I a, a cleric and a war leader? I see. But but I think that one of the things, like, because at one point, the warlock looked like it was just going to end up being a specialty. And spe- specialties are just kind of what we call themes. Um, mm-hmm. Specialties are what we used to call themes, and themes are basically represent feats you take. <laughs> but but w- one of the things we did was we kind of pushed no, the warlock. No, we didn't with say, themes? Well, it's st- basically themes are still themes. We're just calling them something different, so oh, okay, it's just okay. easier for people to figure out like what they actually mean. Okay. Because themes yeah. meant something in previous systems. Exactly. Themes were probably the thing I thought was the coolest. Yeah, and that's in, in four themes means something very very specific. In uh, in next, it's theme. It's it's a similar thing. A theme really in fourth is more like the union of your background and your specialty. That's probably a better way to think about it instead of just calling it theme because there were just parts of the theme in fourth that weren't in the theme. In, in next. I mean, can we drill down and like see what omen? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to do that? Yeah. So one of the things, so basically, so so theme uh, specialty, you know, specialty and background, they basically describe what your character is beyond your class. So to give you an example, um, you might have a background of uh, soldier, or bounty hunter, or um, you know, renegade wizard, or something like that. Exactly. So basically, it's like what you did before your adventure. And you might you might still be doing that because it might be a profession. You still do. Like, if you're a bounty hunter, so it's entrepreneur. Uh... Theme that you guys we, could, we, could, we could build the entrepreneur theme because one of the things we do is like, so with themes basically we just give you examples um, and they're, they're like, yeah because they're pretty general right yeah exactly and then after that we can just we then give you rules for building your own so that goes for specialties and, and back oh so 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 you feel like that's something people can cook in because okay. it's, it's just a, it's a handful of skills and, and like a minor bonus right yeah exactly it's 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 a cool it's basically right at the crossroads of sort of flavor and function right yep it just hel- it helps you kind of it sort of helps push the character away from the dock yep. right so as an example the noble theme gives you three lackeys who just follow you ah! they're just servants they only okay. yeah. they can't really fight but they can do stuff like carry your equipment around in the dungeon you now, need that exactly now the, tr- the trouble is if like you send them into traps and then get killed it's kind of hard to hire new ones so you kind of sure. have to like you don't want to just get them all killed you've but- never played an edition of D D where Hiring NPCs is super important. Have you? No, that we that wasn't really a thing in fourth. No, no, because first first level characters in fourth are already ready to go. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 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 hook me up. I mean, what what are we talking about here? I mean, you 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 are familiar with Omen Drawn. Like, essentially, he runs a business. It's an adventuring business. But he was essentially an urban priest mm-hmm. that started a business. It basically, it's all it's all in line with his deity and everything. Yeah, but Avenger, yeah. it, exactly. So, but he's a, he's essentially um, a business owner who is yeah. also a devout. So, I think I think uh, entrepreneur is a pretty good place to start because so right now we have a, like the skill list and stuff. We we don't have like a bajillion backgrounds. We have like tradesmen, but I think it's might be a little more fun to kind of walk through and think about what your character does. And then oh, it's a PDF. It's a PDF. So sorry, just one second. I need to shrink this file down. So backgrounds are the new themes. Exactly. So, like, we have like artisan and stuff that doesn't really fit. fit no, what he's talking about. Bounty I don't Hunter, think so. Bounty hunter. Let's see if I got like businessman here, noble knight. And so, the great thing is, if we don't have these, then we can just pick out the skills and everything that fits in well. So, so, is, so is the background one of the main ways you get skills? Yeah, it is actually. It is the way you get skills, unless you're a rogue. If you're a rogue, you get more skills. But hmm. if, so basically, what we've done is we've taken the skills out of the character class. So everyone gets the same same number of skills, and you can pick whatever skills you want. So you get to kind of sculpt, but you get them from your, your these packages yeah. here. Exactly. Uh, so, so, in, 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 so in total, is that actually less skills per character? Like, is it sort of thing um, where you need you need to you need to be able to rely on other people more? 
It's so the way. Or what skills, do you mean? Uh, so the way skills shake out is uh, they're more specializations. So the game is really driven by see. ability check. So when we we figure out the DC tables and all that stuff. It's bit, we assume you're not trained in the skill at all, and so most of the time you just be uh, <clears throat> rolling your strength, or your intelligence, or whatever ability score the DM picks. Skills right now give you I think it's a plus three bonus. So basically, it gives you a leg up on other people. I see. So this, but the stat check is the core. Exactly. And and that number, the plus three bonus goes up fairly slowly, like a lot of the math in the system. <clears throat> so you have an eighteen strength. You're really good at doing strength stuff. If someone has a skill that's like say climbing, they're pretty good at climbing, but they might actually, with your eighteen strength, you're still a really good climber all the way up to the end of the game. So the <laughs> the, the, the the skill guy will probably surpass you probably pretty early on. But the difference, the gap, isn't as huge as it, as it might otherwise be. Then the, then the natural ability yeah. to do that kind of stuff. You can almost think like in fourth, imagine if it's, you weren't getting plus half your, your, your level to your, your checks. So it's just if you're trained, you're plus five, everyone else is just getting their ability score. And so, yeah, the skill, and, and we don't, we just use the same DCs whether you're trained or not. So the trained guy can hit higher numbers, can hit higher DCs, but like if the typical DC is like 10, trained guy's hitting that most of the time, but even the average guy's hitting it half the time. So the idea is it's a little bit more, the numbers are a little more compact in training. We're just saying if you're trained, you're better at this. So the entrepreneur background for Omen would decide what abilities he's trained at? Exactly. And or what, what skills. Yeah, yeah. So or what, what skills, skills, yeah. And so you can always just choose three skills from the list. Um, so you don't, if you decide, you can basically make your own background. Oh, cool. So we've got a skill called commerce. I'm actually got a guy well, that makes right sense, here yeah. that's going to fit. What is this? I see. So you, get, so you, got some, you have some new skills, or maybe they're old skills. Yeah, they're a little bit. It's actually this skill list is kind of in flux because we started off with skills that were very broad and they were just kind of overshadowing the abilities. So now we're getting a little more specific. Yeah, and we'll probably even like fluctuate two or three times back and forth and then pick one of those two. Right. But right now it's still up in the air. But there's a commerce skill, and that basically applies whenever you're haggling or negotiating or trying to make a deal. So that sounds like it'd be a good mm -hmm. good match for not. That would be marvelous. Yeah. And then there is a trait. Um, well, that's a tra you could have a trade, which means you're good at making stuff. But that probably doesn't quite fit what you're nah. looking for. Do you have like an office and like a staff? Yeah, I, I have, have a staff. Office. And so an office. we could oh, take yeah. the nobles uh, trait and modify that a little bit. Where is the noble? Let me guess. Like this file is probably missing a noble. Here we go. So you can have retainers. So basically, with your retainers, oh, this is interns. Exactly right. So that'll be your trait, which basically means you have a staff of three, and it's it's what I was describing with the noble. Yeah, trait. exactly. You have these three guys fall. You get them killed. It's kind of hard to replace them, but you kind of eventually replace yeah. them. Yeah. So that could be your trait. So that represents your staff. And this is something we want people to do: is you know, think about what they actually do. Exactly right. And then just kind of go through in the list and find things that fit best. Now sometimes like retainers, the way the flavor text is written, it's kind of aimed at being a nobleman, but. That's not as important as what the actual thing is. As what they do. Exactly. Right. So we've got one of your skills picked out. We've got your trait picked out. And let's see. What other skills do we have here? Um, what else would you say? And these are it's a little messy. It's just because they're, they're divided up. But I, you know, I don't think I have just a list of the skills. But what else would you think, like, when you're, when Orin's... Omen. Omen. Omen, sorry. Omen yeah. drawn. I keep forgetting No one names. knows his yeah. name. It's, it's not your fault. It's not important. Um... <laughs> So, uh, so when, when you're not adventuring, when, uh, what's he doing? What are the employees? Yeah, I mean, bluff. Doing? See, it seems to me like all these things, so commerce, things like um, bluff. Diplomacy, yeah. right? You're making business deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's why I was thinking about bluff. Like, yeah. Yeah. basically those things that smooth the edges of a of a deal. Okay, no, and that's – so actually I feel like I'm an idiot here. Like, what skills are you trained in right now? <laughs> that's probably the easiest place to start. Well, the ones I, the ones I have in here are diplomacy, heal, insight, and religion. Okay, so we could actually go um, commerce um, covers more deal making. Yeah, bluff diplomacy insight. So why don't we go here? And you had insight. And you also had religion trained, right? Yeah. So religion, um, I think the cleric just gives you that for free. I suspect. So we can just strike that one. And so insight is. Let me just check commerce because commerce might incorporate some parts of insight. Um, that's really more just for determining and haggling. The, um, these aren't all the skills, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you had commerce, bluff, diplomacy, and insight, diplomacy gets kind of included in commerce. So we could probably just give you commerce, bluff, and insight. Yeah, I mean, as, 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 as long as long as I could steer the, as long as I could, you know, successfully steer the conversation toward mutual benefit or something like <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> Right, exactly, and that's really like the diplomacy kind of focuses on, as opposed to bluff. Absolutely. So yeah, so the, so the yeah, I want I want to play. I want I'm ready to go. 
So yeah, so we have Commerce, Bluff, and Insight. Now, in the final draft, though, those names will probably be a little bit different. Because sure. I, I think what we're, the Commerce might involve more to be the negotiation or even just be called diplomacy and just be more... Yeah, yeah those things, yeah, exactly. Those types of arrangements may yeah. end up being you know, solidified or something like that. But then on top of that, you have these lackeys who can basically handle basic administrative tasks well, exactly. while we're away. And exactly. And you could, you could bring them on the adventures if you want to carry your gear, if you're whatever. But yeah. then again, you're kind of risking them. But, but yeah, so that is your background. So then the next stage would be then looking at your specialty. So compared to other clerics... What is your character's like? What what makes well basically what you can know, start think of your build. You can think of um, signature abilities you like to use, tactics, big words. <laughs> Let's see poetry. Like in, in, in easy place <clears throat> to start, are you a laser cleric or more a bash cleric? Again, like he was in four, he was designed to have a strong mix. Okay. Like he, in four, because because our party size. I mean, because when we started the game, our party size was you know we just had the three of us. So I felt like it was important to be broad, as okay. broad as possible. So if I need to hold back and, and dispense these heels, I'm ready to do that. And then if I need to be alongside Binwin, then I can do that as well. So in terms of like what sort of solidifies his deal, I mean, I think the main thing that... He tends to be, a, um, I guess, what I would have thought of in 4th edition as a controller. Yeah. Okay. Like he tells... Other people. He what tells to Jim do. and Benwin what to he, do. Or, or if they, what they tend to do is look to me for the nod. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. You know what I mean. So we have the leader specialty. Um, Interest. It sadly only has one feet right now because it's a giant level three feet to be determined node here. So, what is, so, so hold on a second. So I, I think this is a new category of something that I did not know about. So these specialties. This is not the lackeys or anything like. This is something else that's a part of a background that is essentially like a leveling capability. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's separate from your background. So the way you can think of it is, in, in, if you your theme in four E, um, your theme in next consists of your background, your yeah. skills, and that trait we gave you. Yeah, and then your specialty. It basically, uh, that speaks to all your feats. So you can think I of see. A, a specialty is a bundle of feats. That, that, that Weird. You okay. So yeah, as a leader, you have uh, presence, personality, needed to command attention in a room. Um, it's all about. Ah, I just scroll away. So, yes, yeah, so we've got leader here. Um, you could be a commander, politician, a noble. Um, the key is the, the authority you possess. When you talk, people listen. I think that's pretty good for Omen. Yeah, that would work. So we've got one feat here so far. This other feat's coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> T to be determined. <laughs> but the first one off the top would be, you would be uh, battle commander. This would be your feat at first level. And it lets you, um, basically as an action, you can grant your allies advantage on attacks. Oh, yeah, and you can yeah. also um, g wow. give them an extra move. So you can basically you can basically oh, you hear the back. Listen, hold on, that's straight up warlord stuff. Yeah, exactly. So but I can build that into a traditional cleric. Yep, that's one of the things we're doing is kind of blurring some of like the the flavor lines between classes. Like for instance, one of the other themes we have right now is magic user, and that lets you get a familiar. You get a couple cantrips. Things Whoa, like but that. that's independent of being a wizard. Exactly. Yeah. Man. Well, hold on a second. Are, are, are we trying to are we trying to assert these distinctions between classes? So this is the liar. Key. Uh, <laughs> so this is the key, right? Every class. So for instance, the fighter is going to have his expertise dice. You can't get expertise dice. Through oh, stuff. I see. So there's a there's a mechanical function exactly. too that's unique. Exactly. Or in the for instance with the, with magic user with the wizard, you can't get spell slots. You can't get your and this is something I which see. we haven't designed yet, but we're going to add. Uh, each wizard has a different tradition. That's some so, cultural stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What exactly is advantage? Because now you have a system that is advantage and disadvantage, right? Yeah, so one of the things we're trying to do is uh, give that to you. get rid of the, the modifiers that you're applying on the fly at the table. Like, this is obviously still modifier, like bonuses, right? Your attack bonus, your strength, sure. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, but you're saying things like CA. Yeah, exactly. Then it's, instead of adding a number, you're, you, for, if you have advantage, you roll twice, take the highest result. So if, making, if you have attack Whoa! advantage. Whoa! Yep, and if you have disadvantage, you roll twice. And take. Whoa! Advantage. What? Okay. So, hold on, so, see, this was funny. So you asked, you asked this question thinking that you knew the answer, but I, and now you're going to crazy town. <laughs> well, they changed that since that first well, version. Well, I imagine played. it's all different than what you've seen. So you're saying, see, because that's, that's very table game type stuff. So if so, you have combat disadvantage, you roll twice and take the lowest yep. score? Oh, that's bold. That is but fun. if I'm like if I'm fighting a goblin and I'm up on the stairs and he's down a stair, I have advantage over him, right? So this is one of the things where the um DM. A, a lot of it's up to the DM. Yeah. Okay. There are certain like spells and abilities that will just say you get combat advantage in this situation. 
but a lot of it depends on, on the DM. So, but it's we, not just combat advantage now, right? I mean, it's a, the whole idea of advantage is just back against the wall. Is you know, are exactly. you right? It's not just fighting. It also applies to skills uh, <clears throat> or any check. So if you're trying to like say if you're gonna bash down a door and you have a crowbar, you the DM might give you advantage for that. The um, it's a little. I mean, we have to make sure it's the, 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 it's defined pretty well because okay, some things will just give you like a plus five bonus, and then some things will give you advantage. But generally speaking, advantage applies. If it's a modifier that applies only, like, it's something that, in, say, 4th edition, like, a, a player might say, hey, you, you get plus 2 to that one check. We did yeah. that a lot, yeah. Yeah, so instead you're just getting advantage, so you only have to, it doesn't stack, so you just get advantage or you don't. And, you know what, and the DC stays the same, the no matter what it is. You, n- there's no math hmm. at all, you just roll two dice. Exactly. Interesting. Hmm. So there's still bonuses, like you might have a feed or something like that that gives you a bonus, but that's all stuff you're doing when you're making your yeah, character but that's up. very, that's wargaming stuff. You know what I mean? Like I like it. Yeah. So just and again, it's one of the things we're doing is to, 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 to speed up play at the table. Oh god, a disadvantage sounds like a real shit fest. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. What if you roll like a twenty and then a and then a one? You get fucked. Very sad. Unless you have advantage, then you're very happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you celebrate. Hmm. And one of the little things you notice too is uh, what's well, I guess one of the little flourishes of like, but like a lot of times if you've been playing fourth, like players will forget bon- uh, bonuses or modifiers. Sure. Or so All while the they time. say this, is oh man, you forget. Yeah, you're saying, no, Kiko would make these awesome labels. And honestly, I think it worked very well. I mean, eventually it got nuts. But he essentially created a kind of UI that would just float on top of the game, literally with a bunch of stickers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we would have boss monsters that had seven or eight stickers, like plus two from this, minus two from that, like plus two from this, minus two from that. We're trying to streamline all that stuff. Interesting. So, again, one of the nice things, if you forget it, like let's say someone makes an attack and you gain advantage, if you got it, he just re-rolls. Right, so if you roll a miss, say, hey, we just get advantage. Ah, that's smooth, too. So that's one of the things we're trying to do again. Yeah, okay. Like, no, you have advantage. Okay, but out. Yeah. Yeah. So Interesting. You don't have to remember what you rolled. You know, you even forget. Like, you can, someone else's turn to start. You can pick your dice up, and then you remember. So we try to keep it along the same line. So, you know, as far as the usability of it, it, it flows pretty well. So it's the idea that during the course of a battle, a, a player might say, do I have advantage in this situation, or can we agree that I have advantage here? Yeah, usually the way the way it's meant to work out is that the uh, if a player comes up with a good plan, or like let's say, you know, the example you had of like, you know, if, I'm, if you're uh, above the goblin, right? Yeah. You, you might reward s- them with yeah, advantage. exactly. That's I climb up onto the table. Happens. Okay, roll. Well, oh, you have advantage. See, so, but again, but this gets back to RP, right? Mm-hmm. You're not going to have a card that says I get up on the table. Right. right. This is you trying to use your environment or trying to do something clever. And you don't have to say, okay, you use your minor action to get on the table. Exactly. You just, oh, yeah, you just, just up there. It's part climb of up yeah. under the table. Okay. Exactly. exactly. And, then, and then it's like, here's another dice for you to roll. And it's does, the, does the concept of difficult terrain still exist? Um, oh, yeah. Um, so, so, you know, um, moving through different things we, uh, has different amounts of movement it requires and things okay. like that. Yeah. And a lot of, like, you know, checks to, like, maybe you have to make a check to jump up on the table. Again, it's a lot, a lot of it kind of giving the DM the power to decide what kind of game they want to sure. play. Sure. So, like, so. but, like, hip-deep mud. Oh, yeah, that's still, yeah. Now that's we're still talking cool. about disadvantage or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you might, yeah, exactly. Huh. The terrain effects and stuff, yeah. Interesting. Hmm. I am intrigued by that. But here, listen, let's talk about Ben Wynn, Bronze Bottom, and yes. his supposed expertise. I've got so many of them. <laughs> So uh, you got skills you haven't even used yet. They're all inert. They're just inert and waiting to come out. So expertise dice, that is our new fighter mechanic. So if you played third edition, fighters just got bonus feats. And That's right. In second edition, you had like tons of feats, edition. and they had feats that they could use the sliding scale to add damage and things like that. I mean, they had they had ways of goofing around with their rolls and yeah. stuff like that. And then in fourth edition, they're like Gandalf. Yeah. <laughs> You get your powers, right? Right. So one of the things we decided in the first draft of the game, we didn't. Fighters just got bonus. Like fighters just got a bonus to attack and damage, and we we sent it out to be play tested, and everyone basically hated that. Like eighty percent of people said this is lame. So we decided maybe we should go up with something a little bit better. I see. So your your thought was that's what they do. Yeah. Let's just reinforce that. But that just makes them feel dumb, right? Exactly. It's boring. You just every round you just I attack, I attack. Some people like that. A I lot, mean, a lot some of for some people that's boring. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's what, that's what we wanted to do is create a new mechanic that if you don't want to feel you have to do a lot of manage at the table, you can do that. If you want to have a lot of things to manage, a few more options, you can also opt into that. So, uh, uh, bleh, I am totally blanking. No, the uh, expertise, expertise dice. dice. Yeah, like, yeah, come on, come back to us, like, Mike oh, Morales. What, cleric? No, the uh, so expertise dice. Um, at first level, you get a you get a d4. I'll, I'd like it to be a d6, but right now it's a d4. I think it could be a d6 and not break anything. So you get this d6. Yeah, and is the basic fighter. If you hit someone, you get to roll that d6 as a bonus to your damage, right? Pretty straightforward. D4. 
D4. What should be a D6? I'm going to say D6. <laughs> so this will be another thing I can go to the design and say, hey, it's already in the podcast, guys. Yeah, Come on. We can't. we got to go with these. Because D4, I've been rolling D4s in the playtest, and it's a pain. I see. So, so, so the same No one way. likes to roll D4s. No one likes to No, it's so boring. You feel, like a, you feel like a bad you person. You feel like a pansy. Well, what's the most you can get? Four. Yeah. Exactly. And, and also, you, don't want, you never want to have this situation where it's like you make somebody take a feat to make it reasonable. You know, auto yeah. include feet. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. But, but but basically, what you're talking about. I mean, this this is sort of like a rogue's bonus damage on CA. Exactly. Except this, you're getting it all the time, right? You're. But well, this is the thing. You get to choose to use it because if you if you decide to not use it on your damage, you can use it to get DR against an attack. So basically, if someone hits you and you haven't used Whoa. that die yet, you get to roll it and reduce the damage by that much. So that's like the interesting. And that basically represents a parry. So yeah, of course it does. Or something like that. And as you gain levels, you get more and more of these dice. Well, what do you mean more? What do you mean like more like a higher dice? Or do you mean like more literal dice? You get both. So you start off, you get 2d6, and then you can eventually get 2d8 and 3d8. So as a level one fighter, I have a, a, a damage die Yeah. that is what? Oh, it depends on the weapon, right? So let's say it's a d4. Yeah. Okay. okay. Whatever it is, yeah. <laughs> you have a dagger. But in wars are what wizards roll. D. That's not. Well, ne- yeah. it'll never be a D. Okay, let's say it's a D six yeah. or a D eight. It's a D eight yeah, for my sword. I get two D six. Well, at first level you get one one D six. Okay, I get one D six, and I can either I can hit a guy. I hit him. Mm-hmm. I rolled my D six. I'm like, I want to add this extra D six to that damage, yep. or I can hold it, and when he hits me back, I can roll it and reduce. Does that raise my AC or does that reduce damage? It's, it's, DR, it's DR, DR, so it's damage DR. reduction. Yeah, it reduces the damage. Yeah! Wow. And then on That's your turn, cool. on your turn, you, you, you get the dice back. So you have them every round. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to just play so straight, strong. <clears throat> you want to just be straightforward, you're just using them either you, you hit, so you roll them as extra damage, or you miss, so you hold them for your defense. And then if you want, you can take other special special abilities and let you do other things. So it's a things. resource at that point. Exactly. Do you make the player roll it when he rolls damage? Or can he roll damage and then be like, oh, I want to add my d6 to that? Uh, right now it's when, it's when you roll damage. So you have to make that decision. Yeah, exactly. Up front. Before the dice hit the table. Yeah. So, so give me an example of something I might use my expertise dice for. So as an example, actually I'll pull these out of the five. Like granting a plus to a, a friend? Like can I... Destabilize a target. Yeah, you could be more like a, a like a, a little bit of a commander fighter. Though it kind of depends what we want to do with the warlord because this mechanic might show up in another class too. Yeah, yeah. The, um, but like, so right now we have one you can use. You can spend uh, spend your dice to, to knock someone over. So if you hit someone instead of doing extra damage, you can knock them prone. Um, you can also, if you're playing more like the, the uh, swashbuckler, you can spend your dice to shift to move around someone, so you can move without provoking. Oh the man! Um, so you get all your fighter types cool. that you want. Yep. Inside that system, exactly. So some of the guys we have we up here with the different styles, and like a lot like we do with the specialties, you can build your own style. Like yeah, you know, these are basically pre-packages. We have an archer, we have a brawler, we have the duelist who's the swashbuckler. Mm. Uh, we have the the protector who's basically a defender type guy. <laughs> so what can what can the protector do with his dice? So protector, um, you can. I'll read. I'm reading it right here, right? Please do. <laughs> you can spend your dice to reduce damage that your friends take. Yeah. Oh. Uh... So you have a little, you have a few options. Oh and so, man, yeah. I am in so the, love. So with that guy that. would use his dice not on his turn. That's correct. That's yeah. right. Okay. He he's, he uses his to defend on then, your turn, and then when he gets them back on his turn. On his, on his turn. turn. Yep. So what will happen is like let's say at first level you only have one. Wow. Back. So that's if you have cool. one guy next to you, you get to protect him once. As you gain more dice, you can use those dice piecemeal. Like let's say you're a six level guy and you have three dice, and there's five orcs that attack your friend. You can spend. You can you can spend your dice against th- three different attacks. You have three dice, so you can spend one against one attack, one against Speaking the next. Speaking of dice, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so the idea is to make it as complex as the player wants, because a lot of players will just roll those dice on damage, well, or sure. they'll save them. Like, okay, I missed, mm-hmm. but now I just use these dice to to, to block damage to, to survive. Them. Yeah, exactly. I and, like that. And so and and again, so where you've moved the design complexity is to the head end, where you're determining the type in the same way that like the cleric is choosing a domain that has specific functions and determines things like armor class and at wills. You're moving what you can purchase in your personal dice economy yeah. with these top level Exactly. So Binwin would exactly. Binwin would probably have them as damage, right? I mean I would think so. Because in a way, it lets you. You think of the four year roles. Any, like, at least for the fighter now, a lot of the classes, you can kind of pick. You can choose what role you want. Exactly, but but at the same time, right? So I mean, we, we think that because he definitely likes to hit, but also before, as a fourth edition, um, you know, hitter person, he was marking people, 
And that was a way to, to essentially, functionally increase the armor class of his friends. To protect us, yeah. And so I, I, I'm not sure that it is actually completely How, a done uh, deal. Well, here, here, why, don't, why don't you tell us about some of these other functions? Yeah. And, so, and, and, and you know what? What's it going to take to get yeah. you into a D&D Next Warrior today? You tell well, me. Yeah. I mean, I to get me into a warrior today, he's probably going to go back and talk to his manager like three times and do that BS thing. But my dad taught me how I'm ready to walk away <laughs> if I don't get the warrior that I want at the price do of Do all want. dads teach that? <laughs> yeah, my they dad do. taught me the it's same thing. Yeah. They do. Now, did your dad tell you the story where a guy walks in with cash, the box of cash, and goes, here's the cash, give it to me? Give me the car? Yeah. No. Like, if you walk in with the, if you have the cash, just, I'm buying the car. <laughs> you could go in, like, if it's a $15,000 car, you walk with 11 cash, you just go, hey, I've got 11 cash, do you want it or not? <laughs> I had a friend whose grandpa did that. Yeah. He walked in and he goes, we're not haggling. Here it is, 11, a duffel bag, here's 11 grand cash, <laughs> do you want it? And the guy goes, 11 grand, done. Then he walked out and he pulled a hammer out and he went... Bang! And he dented it, and he goes, there, now I won't be nervous about busting it on the way home. And got in the car and drove home. This is a great story. <laughs> you love old coot stories. Oh, man, that story has got the coot factor. Mm. But anyway, coot max. let's get me into a warrior today. All right. What are the types of warriors? What are the types of warriors you've got laid so, out here? Here's what we have. Oh, so, and here's what I can do, right? I have what I have, the off-the-shelf factory things. Sure, sure. For you. What's on the sticker? You, I've got my spreadsheet, so if we have to go and start doing some design, we can do that. Okay. We've got an archer, which I don't think would fit no, your character. No, no. We have a brawler, who's a little bit like a, he like pushes people around, knocks them down, grabs onto them. Mm -hmm. kind of okay, so so he's, he's putting dice into knockdowns and yeah. grabs. A little more like kind of control the ish There we go. Uh, we've got the duelist, which is like the swashbuckler. No. Thing. Yeah, that's not Vinwin. Okay, now we have protector, though, which might be something that kind of speaks to your character, because that's like how benevolent... Benwin's feeling? Is he here to actually take hits to the rest of the team? Um, it's what I'm supposed to do. It yeah. was what I was hired to do. I kind of get the sense <laughs> it might not be what you want. To. Yeah. I've never done it. <laughs> so what we have then maybe, and this is this is my final thing. Okay. Yeah, I don't normally show this to people who just came out off the street. Sure, I understand. Here. We've got this thing. We've got the Slayer. I've made awesome. your company a lot of money. It's, uh, the Slayer. The Slayer. The I'm liking more. this. The Slayer is all about you, right? As a Slayer, it's all oh. about killing stuff. Yeah. Right? You're just saying, I don't really care the rest of the party's doing. Here's me, here's my weapon, and here's a guy I want to kill, and I'm going to kill him. And so you get things like, you know, maybe if you missed an attack, but you rolled kind of a ni nice number, you kind of feel cheated, like you should have maybe had a better attack. Ooh. You can just go ahead and roll your expertise dice and do damage on those. So you kind of get more hits. Oh, in. so you get better minimum damage. Exactly, yeah. Or, or you get minimum damage on attacks you don't hit with. Yeah, as long, now right now it's like it's just if you just flat out miss, but what, what the mechanic's probably going to change be like you have to roll like a five or higher or some number or higher. So if you don't critically higher. miss. Yeah, exactly, something like that. Hmm. So basically you can still put board. some dice on somebody. That's pretty interesting. I like it. Now, yeah. now, does it, now would that damage, this damage we're getting from dropping the dice, is that going to be buffed by his strength? No, it wouldn't. So that, that is the important thing to consider is when you're rolling mm. these dice, you only get the dice, you don't get the any modifiers, because it would just be a little unbalanced. Cause then the oh, yeah, it would be a mess. I was hoping it would, would be unbalanced, and that would be great, because he's going to be in my party. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting. So you can always, you're always getting something. Now, can these... Hopefully. Yeah, exactly. Now, can these warriors also do it, also use them for the traditional purpose of just getting yep. extra damage on an attack? Exactly. So these are all extra things that exactly. they can do. Yep. The gotcha. damage and absorbing damage, it's always, all fighters get that. Oh, okay. So so that's not something specifically kitted. Exactly. Ah. That's kind of like the onboard option. Right? There we go. Like, like power steering. Exactly. And then you get a cleave, which you've played third edition. You should, oh, yeah. So you can cleave people at third level. So if you drop someone, you get to make another attack. Uh, I like that. You get yeah. a thing called repost, which basically it's kind of like a better version of the damage reduction. If someone attacks you and misses you, you can spend three dice to make an attack back, back at them. A full attack. Uh, yeah, oh, full attack. that's pretty cool. So, and, and you're just rolling damage. Um, for, for, and for, oh, for the, for the repose? Oh, no, you, you still have to roll, oh, you roll the attack. But then if you roll your attack and miss, you can use your glancing blow feature if you still have some dice left over. Okay. But you have to spend three dice, though, to get the repose. So the repose is a big, yeah. big okay. spend. Yeah. And, then, and then there's Whirlwind, which lets you attack. Um, if you hit a guy... You could spend your dice to attack other guys. So if you're surrounded by orcs, and this is your ninth level ability, you could hit a guy. use that when I play with Faye. So Can I ask you other repost? So these are my three dice. Mm -hmm. This is my d20. Sure. I get missed. Yeah. So the guy misses me. I, I, I want to hit him back. Yep. 
I'm gonna spend spend all three. three of my dice. Yeah, so those, you don't roll those; they're just gone. And now you go ahead and roll regular. Those are your expertise. To see if I hit. Yeah, exactly. And then I deal damage. Yeah, just regular damage. But I don't have any more expertise dice yeah. to add. Assuming damage, you only damage. had three to begin with. Now, obviously, yeah, sure, when you're sure. higher level, yeah, you yeah, may yeah. have an extra dice you can use in the traditional way. Yeah. Okay. And when you're tenth, um, where it's been when it is, you'll get forty twelve as your bonus. Forty so, twelve. So what the basically, hell? this is us making wow. fighters as badass as wizards. Exactly, but not making them badass in the wizard way. Exactly. So if he hits somebody like a ton and of really bricks. wants to kill them, he could be like, "I'm gonna roll four more d12, and that's gonna be straight damage." Yep. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. no, 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 stop. You're saying that I can roll all of these dice on one attack? Yes. What the fuck? Well, think about it, guys. Honestly, because the the reason why I like this, holy shit, is that D and D is always reduced whether you kill a person to a number of hit points, right? Like you're just hacking away at this guy. Where in real life, if you have a sword and you put it in the right place, the guy's no, no, gonna no, die. no. This is what this is is Conan shit. Yeah, this is that forty twelve is like a decapitation. That's what I'm saying. You do not fuck around with this yeah. fucking necromancer. No, you, <laughs> you, you bring the, the axe. Neck. Yeah. You bring the axe down yeah. on the necromancer. So to give you guys some uh, a way to compare this, so at 10th level, the 10th level mook guy, the kind of typical guy, and I'm not sure what kind of creature that would be. They a, have mook, about, a mookling. Yeah, they have about 31, 32 hit points. So you could now, but generally, if you're playing in a regular campaign, you'd be fighting more, <clears> probably more like, like level 5 mooks at that level, because usually the higher level guys are elites and more yeah. powerful. But even then, so basically the fighter, if he's fighting a guy who isn't like a, a minotaur or something like that, you can just chop him down and, and with one. But then, but then again, what are my hit points at that level? Yeah, and your hit points are going to be, let's see. I'm at 10th level, they're going to be good. I'm as easy to kill, right? You have, well, I think. So your hit dice are probably 12s, right? Yeah, his, his hit dice, well, it's a dwarf, they could be d12s, depending on what kind of dwarf you're playing. But you're going to have What kind of a dwarf I'm playing? Yeah, there's different things you get to choose. You're going to have about 75 hit points or so. Give or take. High. That's tough. So as a DM, do my monsters have... like uh, you, As a DM in 4th edition, I had monsters that were basically the same roles as my players. I had controllers and I had, you know... Am I going to have a f- monster that's a fighter that has expertise mm-hmm. dice? So one of the things we want to do is keep the, mo- the base mechanics for monsters fairly simple. Okay. If there is a fighter, it'd probably be more like an NPC, like the main villain... Yeah. If you were fighting like uh, like train guards, they're probably going to have um, effects that are a little simpler. Like they might, it might just be a flat bonus rather than okay. a extra dice and things like that. But like a boss, like a main character, he might have expertise yeah, dice, exactly. and I'd be spending them just like the you know, players. In, in the yep. same way, in the same way, like when we make when we make a, a real so NPC, I could roll forty twelve against him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. But again, right? So, so obviously, everybody else is monsters. Like mechanically speaking, they're monsters. But when you make that nemesis. You know, that's almost always a character. Yeah. Wow. And, and that's yeah. something we're kind of carrying through, because what we want to be able to do for DMs is, you know, we've talked about, like, the different f- fighting styles, is make some really super, sim- super simple ones DMs can use. You don't have to track as much unless you want to. But, it's, but I'm, I'm still thinking about this villain, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he, the sword is just clanging off. Like, this is, like, a very cinematic moment. when He's, he's up spending in, them to repost. Or he, he's, he, he's, just, he's just knocking them off until he's ready to do, and ready, until he's ready to spend dice. And drop a PC. I like that. Yeah. Oh. So, obviously, that's great for him. Yeah. Am I as cool? Love it. <laughs> like, no. No. The wizard so, doesn't have expertise dice? There, there, so there is a little bit of a hitch here. So you know how he said it's to make the warrior as powerful as a wizard? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So the one thing with the wizard is basically um, the wizard is going to look a little different since you're coming from fourth. It looks a little bit more like the third edition wizard, and you have your, your different spells. I don't know spells. what that wizard is. So basically, what you have for, as a wizard is you have your, your at will spells. Okay. So things like magic missile. Oh, okay. So, okay. So you still retain some of those things. Exactly. So I have a spell. I can do something whenever I want. Exactly. Magic missile. Yep. Pew pew. And I think you have three of those to start with. You get to pick. Okay. And then your spells. You may have say you'll have three daily spells at first level, and those would be things like sleep or burning hands. That are more powerful, obviously more powerful in your at wills, yeah. but still low level. Yeah, exactly. And then as you gain levels, you'll you'll get more spells. Um, you don't actually get more at wills. Like you could choose to take feats to get more of them if you want. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you go from three spells to four. Then you start getting second level spells, third level spells. So those are basically higher spell levels. The one thing that I'm a little disappointed right now with is we are also adding uh, magical traditions to the wizard class. Okay, so this is this is their domain equivalent. Exactly. Those have, haven't, been, haven't been designed yet, though. 
So that's one of the things okay. where... Because we basically tackled the fighter, and now we're going to tackle the wizard. I see. So this is like thaumaturgy... Yeah. Uh, wild magic, uh, war magic. Oh, I see. So you'll build those like in. They're not going to be full classes. Exactly. Be You're going to build that into the head. You'll be a exactly. wizard who specializes in elemental magic. Exactly. Or, okay. Nice. Yeah. And, and that'll give you some more... Kind of like... With or the, with, illusion. Exactly. So we can give you a couple of class features. You might get some different at-will abilities, and it'll modify your spells. Hmm. That sounds really... That, that would have been a very cool conversation, Mike Merles. So, yeah, yeah. And it, it's just... It, it just we're kind of... You're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there, right? We have the cleric and the rogue kind of basically sold, and the, fi- the fighter we spent a while getting on. Getting Man, the fighter is super... I'm cool. totally sold on that, but here, 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 here. So let, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this wizard. Well, it sounds like he doesn't have the wizard ready. To oh, kill. I have I have some stuff here. Oh. The, um, but basically, it's not going to be... I mean, the one trick with the wizard right now is there aren't there just aren't, aren't, aren't too many choices beyond your spells. I see. And what, what we want to make sure is that if you look through the spells you're using, like, what's one, one of your favorite spells right now? Magic Missile. Yeah, okay, that's in the game, right? <laughs> okay, so a lot yeah. of that stuff converting would just be, yeah, the old spell, here's the new version of it. Let, let, let's give... So it sounds like wizard... Is on the is on the periphery of what we're talking about here, but you see, you seem to imply that you had rogues solved. Oh, kind of. <laughs> I want you to tell me about what that means. So one of the things we did when we looked at rogues, and actually I'm probably overstating that a little bit because sneak attack is still kind of not it's malfunction a little bit. <laughs> I didn't open rogue because we don't. Eh, sorry, one sec. I'm not going to suddenly go and I just opened up my web browser. Here we go, rogue. So uh, rogues get a couple things. One of the things we decided with rogues very early on was we wanted rogues to be the absolute best class with skills in the game, like. To say if you want to be awesome at skills and awesome at doing like different creative stuff, play a rogue because rogues are just the best at it. So rogues to start with get they get sneak attack. Right now it's um like you have to spend a turn hiding and then you can pop out and, and get your bonus damage. Like we're back kinda, in the day. Yeah, we're kind of thinking maybe we should just give it to you like maybe give you like a, a lesser version you can get every round, then give you a backstab where like if you yeah. do some setup. When it comes to skills though, so rogues get three extra skills. So everyone else Whoa. gets three skills, they get six. And when a rogue makes a skill check. He gets two things. First, I, like advantage. Uh, no, he actually gets um, when you when, <laughs> for your die roll. If your die roll is a minimum of ten, yeah. So if you roll less than a ten, it's always at least a ten. So basically, you always get to take ten. Oh, nice. And then if the ability score the DM calls for, um, you can choose to replace the modifier with a plus three bonus. So basically, if you're looking huh. for traps, even though it's normally wisdom, if you're playing an eight wisdom rogue, you're still instead of being minus one on your check, you're at plus three because you're just. You're good you do, with your This skills. is what you do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So even though you might not have a natural talent for it, you still have a pretty good aptitude. Yeah, if you have an 18, then you can use your 18, your plus 4, instead of a plus 3. So that's kind of like a basic functionality. Yeah. The, um, and the nice thing, and what I'd like to play is it means rogues are really good at being, um, say, scouts. Because you know you're always going to roll at least a 10. Most monsters aren't very observant, like orcs have like an 8 wisdom, and stuff like yeah. that. So if you have an 18 dex and you're trained, you know the, you're, the minimum you're going to roll is a 17. So you can be pretty confident if you decide to go scout ahead. Mm-hmm. That unless you come across something that's really good, like it's a good sentinel yeah, type creature. They have a floor there. Exactly. They don't get those so the, critical failures. Yep. The role of the rogue in D and D next is more of a sneaky guy, you know, as opposed to kind of a rough and tumble fighter scoundrel guy. Yeah, it's well this is where then we, we talk about the rogue's unique ability. Uh, each rogue gets a scheme. So the schemes kind of sp- speak to that. So you can choose to be a thief, you can choose to be a thug. And that basically it ties into how you get your sneak attack damage. That's cool. And then it gives you some some special other benefits. The um, so for example, if you're playing a, a thief, that's your scheme. Uh, you get night vision. You can see in the dark because ah, you're just good at skulking cool. around. Um, you can sneak much easier. So a um, normally to hide, you have to have like either something blocking you from view or it has to be really dark. The thief can hide even if there's just shadows. So it might be like an alleyway, which is kind of okay. And, you know, the lighting's not that high, but <clears> not that great. And the, the thief could hide there. But the thug couldn't. But the thug is better at just straight up fighting people. Sure, sure. Yeah. Give me an example That's of how cool. he's better at straight up fighting. So the thug, let me look at it here. I'll check. The, but, he's, a, uh, he's a dirty fighter. Yeah, exactly. So the, the key thing with the thug is right now, and this, and this is probably going to change a little bit. Yeah. But the thief has to hide to get um, sneak attacks. Exactly. Like ambusher. The thug gets uh, his uh, his bonus damage as long as there's someone else engaging his target. Because basically he's a dirty fighter. So someone's distracted, ah, you come see. in and stab in the back. So basically it's that old back. CA equivalent. Exactly. But now you have this person who is built to deal extra damage when they're fighting with their friend. Exactly. And that's more like you know, the warrior rogue, mm-hmm. so, as opposed to the sneaky scout guy. And then the, so another one we have is the, the charlatan. And this guy is based on kind of like the first edition version of the thief, where he could use magic items and stuff. That's oh, cool. Right. So, yeah. I remember that. So the charlatan kind of dabbles in magic. He can't cast spells, but he can like try to use scrolls, try to use magic items, oh, and stuff like that. That's cool. That's a so, weird one. 
Yeah, it's kind of going back. We kind of went back to the old mechanics <coughs> and tried to yeah. bring stuff up. So if you're playing a first edition thief, you could. This might be how you might convert him. That's pretty awesome. Weird. Man, anytime you bring in that first edition stuff, I get. <laughs> well, it's just, it was just so. It was so scary, odd. And cool, and yeah, weird. it was yeah, so it was weird. weird. Yeah, that's that, that's the main thing. It's, it's so you much. You look for those old yeah. monster manuals, and it's just like <gasps> you feel like I do I not see an influence. You know, exactly, but you look at. It and sometimes I'm like, man, that is a lot of XP. I can't wait to kill that. <laughs> And then sometimes you look at these old, and, and the art is way worse. It's not great art, right? And I'm like, I never want to see this fucking thing. But you know what's cool about that old art in first edition? Because I've kind of got my eyes on this reprint. Yeah. Is what, now when you buy a monster manual, some badass fucking render paints exactly what you'd see. But first edition is like, you come up on a hieroglyph, oh, like it's a cave it in. and you're like, yeah. what the F is that going to be? What yeah. is this mark? Yeah, exactly. It's a little bit more Lovecraftian, right? It's, yeah, sort, of, it's, it's sort of like, like a, this. listen, this is the best image we could get. What was that guy, <laughs> uh, the German guy that did all the woodcuts? What was his name? Ah, Art oh, History, you yeah. fail me. Hans Block. Hans Block, yeah. I'll think of it later. Fix that in post, Kiko. <laughs> <laughs> Who did all the wood prints? Someone's listening right now and screaming at me. Yeah, but it's like that. It's like a wood print. A wood yeah, cut. I see. So it's a, being more elemental somehow keeps it weird. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was basically it was Gygax, like who amongst his friends could draw. Yeah. They didn't have the internet, right? They'd have, how would you find an artist, right? If you're like, if you're in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, you talk to your friends. Yeah. So are you gonna cut out uh, quality art from D and D? That's how we're gonna save money. We're just pure, <laughs> purely gonna trace. They're gonna from call Marvel Jeff comics. D. Call Jeff D. and Bill Willingham. I don't know if Bill could afford him now. Jeez, he does I know Bill. I'll tell him to do some art <laughs> for me. Come on, Bill. But it's it's kind of cool. I, think, I mean, I don't know. I just kind of wasn't around anything back then with the resources they had to work with. Where is Jeff D at these days, I wonder? He still does, um... He has like a couple Kickstarters, I think. Because they threw out all his art. No! Yeah, they threw out all the D&D art? TSR back in the day, they just they would just throw stuff out. They oh, wouldn't shit. even think about it. It was all done. Oh it's like, I guess we're done with this. It's, like, it's like the BBC taping over old Doctor Who yeah. episodes. People just you don't think... They had no choice. Well, I mean, think about it. No, no, they had no choice. Paper is so expensive. Isn't there penny arcades that don't exist in high res? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's true. Well, you, you don't really you don't really know what you're doing. Yeah, well, you can't. When you're young, like you don't. Well, you don't know that what you're making is, is going important. to last. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know if you guys heard. It's never your presumption. Uh, yeah. There was a warehouse in Wisconsin that was just full of TSR stuff. They just emptied out like six months ago now. Like it was just the company was getting billed like every five years for this warehouse, and somebody finally finally noticed like why are we paying this bill? <laughs> no. And they had it emptied and sent out here. And it's just this treasure trove, like the oh, D&D okay. toys. So this, this, this story doesn't end with a chipper shredder, then? No, good God, no. <laughs> okay. It's actually, we're uh, actually auctioning off a bunch of those um, things for Gen Con. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. oh that's yeah. sweet. Well, here, Scott, why don't you get a blank piece it. of paper out? I got it right now. And let's put, let's get Binwin on paper right now. Remove these expert drawings. Because Warrior, it, it, it sounds, it sounds like Warrior's ready. Shit. It yeah. sounds like Warrior's right, ready to go. Just pretty locked in. Beat it. So you can't. Good. Do you have your character sheet? I do. I don't need this old 4th edition piece of shit. Oh, whoops. I mean, what? Well, so you're going to need some of the things. So you're going to start with your ability scores. Okay, Uh, cool. If they're not over 20, they're the same. So just write those down. All right, so my... Okay, so... And then the modifiers, you just don't add half level. Strength, con, dex, int. All these are staying. Wisdom. Charisma will be important in in D&D next, maybe? They might be. Because actually, you make saving throws now, it's just your ability scores. Right. 20, so, yeah. 16, 16. So hold on. So, so his strength Someone of 20 is this character is cheated. His strength of 20. Did you bring back, is, is, is 18, 100 a thing? Oh, no, no, yeah. It's okay, so okay. abilities. Not yet. But actually, it's intelligence now. 18 is never really intelligence. All right, so what? do I put my modifiers or no? Weird. Yeah, your, your modifiers says for strength it's plus 5 because you have a 20, and then your 16s are still plus 3, so it's just like 34. And normally you wouldn't get a start with a 20 strength, but since you're 10th level, you've got a couple of ability bumps that presumably what? you spent on your strength. I don't really understand. What my, what's my modifier on 10? Uh, 10, I ne- never pay attention in school. What's on so, a 12? so hang on a second. So, so ability scores still get bumps in the new version? Okay. The key is that uh, 20s are max, so if you get a bump and your score is a 20, you can just you can play it some, you can drop it somewhere else. All right. What's next? <laughs> this is good. This is a good frame. So, uh, so you got your ability scores. Yep. Um, let's do your background. So your background's going to give you your skills. Yeah. Do you have any idea what your background would want to be? I mean, take a look. What which skills do you have trained? Do you want to keep those? Do you want to change some of them? Well, my skills. Let's, let's think see. about it, right? I had athletics. Dungeoneering is super important to Ben Wynn. Yeah. Yeah. Intimidate was another skill. Okay. I don't know if I ever used it. That's a cool combo. Yeah, it's cool, though. It's cool to have it. Yeah, well, you know, people know that I'm willing, I'm impulsive. It's good flavor. 
And then, uh, well, those are racial features, and then I have feats, but... Uh, so your skills, um, yeah. if you want to convert those to the three you have trained over, the only difference would be with athletics. You'd have to pick like between jump or climb or swim because it's just the skills. Swim are... is not, and I don't think I'm going to be good at swimming. Climbing. But I do jump over things a lot. You do, yeah. So you can take jump as your, one of your skills. So, so that right. skill is busted so into three. Jump. Yeah. And it's going to emphasize more ability checks. It's, so. Yeah. It's, it's, is dungeoneering still a skill? Yeah. So it, it'd be called, it'll probably be called some like uh, dungeon lore or something like that. Yeah. You just write down I'm going to write dungeon lore because that sounds good. And then intimidate. Yeah. And now that would just remain the same. So what do we think? Is there a, is there a background that that includes jumping, intimidation, and dungeon <laughs> lore? I do not think we happen to have like, that exact so far, thing. So far, the description is a crazy person. It's called the Binwinner. <laughs> and it's if you no, want no, it's to... the Binwinner. The Binwinner. <laughs> so now it's made me kind of think, like, what, what was Binwin before he was an adventurer? What well, he... the thing is, I'm biased because I remember during the first play test, I kind of picked one, mm -hmm. and I kind of liked it. What'd you like? It was the pub crawler. Oh, okay, yeah. So you could just go ahead. So that is actually. Oh, I don't know if I have pub crawl in this thing. But you can you can just go ahead and write that down. Okay. We'll have, uh, I don't because that's probably that. where Omen found Binwin. Yeah, I imagine. Let's be honest. Well, because remember that the the office is in the basement of an inn. Sure. Let me see if I can find you a trait. That's sure, we all would. Oh, I like that gym. Isn't that a good one? That's a good one. I really. Oh, I really like the way he made his neck long too. Yeah. I gave him a little, and I think that he might have his cape open a little bit just to show a little chest. Hair. Yeah. Well, it's tuft. His, it's yeah. his night outfit. Yeah. He's going out to a tavern. Yeah. All right. So how about this? Do you want a bad reputation as a as a pub crawler? Yeah. So basically, it gives you um, advantage in all attempts to intimidate people. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice combo. And wherever you go, people are basically automatically they tune into your your sense of uh, menace and violence. So. If you go into a bar, you're kind of the people know you're the baddest dude in the bar. Yeah. No, is it so? Is that cool or bad? Uh, like the baddest. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I mess the mess with. I see, but, but the it, uh, exactly. But, but but there's a respect factor. Exactly. It isn't yeah. just like oh shit, and they Your run out. Your reputation yeah. precedes you. There we go. They have heard about that one time. Exactly. Right. So there you go. That's your background. Awesome. And so then we think of what your specialty might be. Actually, we should talk about, did you want to take the, the, the Slayer option for the fighter? I mean, yeah, I think that, that, sounded pretty that cool. sounds the most like Binwin. Okay, cool. So basically, even if he doesn't hit you, you get hurt. Yeah. yeah. He nicks you with the back of it. He's, he lo he just loves to kill, and he doesn't really think about anything else in the process. Okay, yes, yeah, so that sounds like good. But also, I like the idea, I mean, essentially, that essentially it sort of describes a person who hurts people on accident. Yeah. yeah. Like the axe is just kind of moving around. <laughs> yeah. So then we've got, let's see. Uh, fighter. Sounds like a, a something might happen if a guy was drunk and fighting. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's sort of a, it has a Laurel and Hardy aspect. So then we come to your specialty. What, well, now, what, what were some, maybe some of the feats you took for your character? Or like uh, some of the powers you liked using? So, well, this character's been changed so many times. Uh, let's see. I had superior fortitude. Um, I was proficient with axes and hammers. Um, and uh, I had a shield proficiency. And then let's see. Other class features. So maybe like as, as an I sense Faelauer's hand in this character. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, mercenary starting feature. I gain the takedown strike power. Quick swap. Switch out your weapon super fast. Uh, plus two power bonus to intimidate and streetwise. That fits this new one. Brutal axe. When you use power strike with a two-handed axe, you can knock the target prone. Okay, so you're kind of like a you maybe want to be, go, go with a specialty that's going to even speak more to just like kicking the hell out of things. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, but, but this this is the thing is that is that I mean he was sort of built and there's no question when I look at all those shield proficiencies yeah. that's fail our through and through. But it seems like we can make a binwin in this system that is a little bit more like Binwin. Yeah. Like he is not eloquent in no. his capabilities. You know what I mean? It's not like he graduated from Dungeons & Dragons version it, of West Point. Yeah, Axe Academy. No. You know, like, that's not what happened. So what, what do you got for us? So there's a couple here. So um, Guardian probably doesn't quite fit because you want to be more offense than... Yeah. So I have good news and bad news. The good news is we do have a Slayer theme. The bad news is a lot of its mechanics were stolen by the Slayer option you took for your fighter. Yeah. The um because it's obligated right now. It's got Reaper and Cleave, which are basically both the abilities you They're have. They're built right in there. there. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need that. So um, let's see what we got here. Uh, where is it going to actually be here? So let's get a little creative. So do you want to? Do you see like when you think of your character, right? And you think of like the way you fight. Do 
you um, how was there like one word you used to describe that? Like, were they kind of sensitive? Reckless. Reckless. Yeah. Okay. Rash. Cool. So I'm going to build a specialty for you right now, which I'm sure will make the designers pull their hair out when they actually see it. But <laughs> I better so, see it in the book. Oh boy, <laughs> this is the custom stuff. We are actually doing a panel at Gen Con where basically where the fans get to tell us what to do. Like hey, we're going to build a, a theme on, on stage. So I'm going to call, create a specialty called Battle Rager. Yeah. And let's see. I'm going to give you the Rage ability, which means you can take disadvantage to deal maximum damage. Mm. Oh, that drives me wild with wow. desire. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's called what? Battle Rager? Uh, yeah. And then, oh, man. Benwin would do that. And would, you guys will be... all the time. And we'd be so mad. You'll be mad. So mad. So I can take a combat disadvantage. Yes. So you roll two dice and take the lowest. But if you hit, you deal max damage. That'll happen every round. <laughs> And then, oh. do you see uh, Benwin as being like really like unstoppable, tough? Like he just he's just really reckless, throws himself into dangerous situations. So he can really take a blow pretty well. Or oh yeah, he's usually full of arrows and covered in acid. I mean that's great for a story, and I'm I'm perfectly fine going that way. But I don't want to be um, no fun to play with because I just am unkillable. Yeah. So what what I was thinking of doing was giving you a feat that um, let's do this. So with this combat disadvantage, yeah. So whatever I hit, if I I, I take combat disadvantage, which means the lowest roll counts. Yep. But if I hit, I don't have to roll damage; just max damage. Exactly. Shit. That sounds a lot. That's, every, that's Vegas at the table that's every night. Be like, please don't do this. At the, no. Please. Yeah, please. Ben don't. Win, no. Ben win. I'm like, no. This is our last chance. <laughs> Oh man, but then you, but then you, when you connect with that, mm -hmm. and then you start dumping dice into your max damage hit. Yeah, max damage plus four d twelve. Yes. Because that 40 12 doesn't count as, as a possible max damage, right? Yeah, that, that, okay. that, that's probably how I want See, and that's, that's where I just go up and take someone's head off. Oh, shit, yeah. 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 It's going to be great. It's going to be the best, guys. You're going to love it. All right, so then... Uh, Until I miss. And I'm killed. No, no, then it'll be funny. Like, we can't, we can't lose. We're at the table to have All fun. All right, so what's this next part of my specialty? So I, wanna, I won't have a number for you, but you'll probably get some bonus hit points. Because okay. in Petra's Battle Rage, you like to get stuck in the middle of things. So yeah, yeah. Having, increasing your hit points probably makes sense. Yeah, right, right. right. The, um, you're kind of a tough guy. And then, let's see, so you're kind of, let's see, you're reckless, so you're doing a Battle Rage thing. Um, you're probably going to have like a sort of a, do you, like, do you usually like to charge? Is that the first thing you like to do? Yeah. Are you thinking of like a, a collateral damage? Yeah, something like, like well, 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 when you said that, like, well, what, what did you have in mind? What were you thinking about? Like, like, like you, you can take some damage and deal some damage, or is it kind of or like people a, get damaged when you damage somebody else. Like, in other words, you know, if we're like, if I'm running down a hallway away from my friends mm -hmm. and go ape shit, the things that are all in my wake are bad people. But <laughs> if we're in a tight group and I go ape shit, my friends are gonna take a little bit of. They're gonna. They might get. Oh, you I know see, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like. Oh, so so we're talking about something that actually because makes I you am go frequently away. the target of your spells. That's like, true. You are <laughs> drop, make me the target, and I always take some of your damage. But like, if yeah. if I start losing my shit in the middle of a tight group, you guys yeah. might feel. So, I see. So the, yeah, go ahead. The prick of my axe as well. Yeah, exactly. But I'm saying that what it does is it sort of reinforces that impetuous, solitary nature. Yeah. yeah. So how about like an overpower ability when you attack? You can also deal damage to everyone around you, friend or foe. Like you don't, you can, you have no finesse to it. You can't decide. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah I like that. I feel like the designers gonna freak out. Show them this. Hmm. The designers are probably gonna have an embolism when they show them. That's fine. All right. The um, and see, so then you need one more. So you get, you get feats at level one, three, six, and nine, and you're level ten. So one more thing. Now we could always just we could give you some more bonus hit points if you want to be really tough. Yeah. Um, he spends a lot of time on fire from gym spells. That's true. What if what if does uh, ongoing damage exist? Oh yeah, yeah, we'll still have that. Yeah, something like something that helps you helps negate ongoing damage. Yeah, we'll do something like that. What if uh, what if we tie it back into my my pub brawler? What if like I get a bonus of fighting while drunk? Or oh, that's different, right? Well, when you're drunk, you get dis. When you're drunk, you get disadvantage. So you can just take disadvantage. Does it matter? Double the, disadvantage. Um, <laughs> you roll five dice. <laughs> you know, we could we maybe maybe give you some dr. So like you talk about with Jim's spells hitting you, and yeah. ongoing damage. We give you like dr five and a lot of ongoing damage, like five or ten. So yeah, that'll help. You're just tough. And yeah, you don't have to get been that set on level. fire a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I have been. Yeah. You're tempered. My skin's <laughs> used to it. Yeah. I've been tempered. <laughs> right. I'm like a cast iron skillet. <laughs> yeah. Just keep me oiled. Don't clean me. No, 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 no. 
Yeah, and so th- that, would, that would probably be the feat you'd get at ninth level. That's cool. Which might be your last feat. We're not sure what levels above above That's level fine. ten yet. But so you're yeah. So you got. You That's rage. fun. That's already fun as hell. I want to see yeah. it. I want to see yeah. it. So then after that, um, you see, uh, oh, so at tenth level, you're saying that he has four D twelve yeah. expertise stats. Exactly. So these skills we described: the battle rage or the bonus hit point, the overpower, and the damage resistance. Those come as I level. Exactly. Okay. Those are your feats. They're in addition to what. what that's you right. But Benwin is level ten, and so you. Oh, have that's it. right. I've got him. Yeah. yeah. So now, so four D. You have four D twelve expertise dice. Okay. Now, uh, now, how do we how do we generate Benwin's hit points? Okay, so Benwin's hit points are. Let me look at my fighter file here. So your so right now, um, you can choose to roll for hit points, um, or you can just take the average. So your hit points at first level will be you get. And actually, there's this kind of open question here. I'm not sure if you're adding your hold constitution. On, so you, so hold on, Reed, so we're, we're going back to dice rolls? If you yeah. want, you can choose. So you it's can do that in 4E, too. Campaign. You yeah. could? Yeah. Yeah, you could just pretty easy to house rule, because you can okay. just figure out what So yeah, it's up to the DM, depending on the campaign he wants to run. You can either just get automatic hit points, or you can roll. Um, if you just took it one with automatic hit points, and this number will actually change, I think there's still a couple tweaks you have to make. But right now, uh, based on these rules, you would get... Uh, let's see, six, fifty-four, sixty-four. And what's your what's your constitution? Sixteen. So you would get about sixty-seven hit points. So that's probably lower than it should be because I know right now you you probably actually end up with more like um, like ninety. Okay. Because so, mm-hmm. right now I'm not adding your con modifier, but I think you you're supposed to be adding your con modifier. For yeah, and, and his old his old HP was eighty-five. So okay, that, yeah, so you're about the same same. That huh. tracks. Huh. So you could see if you're fighting a fighter of your level. Like each hit, if he was throwing his expertise dice into the damage, you could take like three or four hits before you do that. Yeah, so, and that's where we kind of against an equivalent foe. Where we kind of I like that. that. That's, that's cool. the way it should be. Cool. But I mean, right now we just we basically made your tenth level fighter. The only thing you have to do after this point is just your equipment, um, and then you're done. Man, that's fucking insane. That's because cool. that tenth level character, I mean, that would be you at the computer with two friends. Yeah. Behind you For an talking. Hour. And there's no comparing a list of twenty it's abilities. Move. Well, it's both. Tag yeah. and move. And these were things like you know when we have the specialty, like instead of choosing four feats, if you just saw the battle rage specialty and said, "Hey, this looks cool," you know, you're making one choice instead of four. Yeah. It's a nice right. package. So, yeah, things like that. You know what I mean? And then the the background, sort of background specialty. Here we go. Yep. Exactly. So, the wizard will have a background, and the wizard will have a specialty too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But it will also have spells. Yeah. But, yeah. Spells. And that's and that's in addition to. The schools? What did, what did you call uh, them? Traditions. 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 Magical, Magical traditions. traditions. Yeah, traditions. Will so, wizards yeah. have to memorize their spells every day? Yeah. 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 That's the best. I mean, the thing I noticed in the even the very early playtests that we did with our group, you know, one of our players was playing a wizard, and he was so used to a 4E wizard where he was just... He cast a bunch of stuff, like, right when they first walk in that cave. A yeah. mystical torrent. Yeah, and then he's like, all right, I want to use those again. And it's like, no... You used it already, like it's done. Um, and so then he's like, okay, I need to be real careful with these other ones I have. And so he was just casting his magic missile. And then, but when you get to the last room, it's like, okay, now get the wizard up here. Like, now turn it up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we're hoping, like, you know, people, if they're playing the 40 wizard, they really like that style of power, they could play a warlock and they get something that's very similar mechanically. And hopefully it has a nice, distinct story, so you feel different, but you don't feel like you're, you're like, there right. might be some people when they convert a character to shoot and they decide to change class. Because it just yeah. better fits in with what their signature ability is. So would Will, I mean, playing as a ranger, exactly. is he going to be a uh, fighter that uses a bow? No, no, he wasn't a ranger, right? I mean, he was actually... Was, um, oh, that's uh, right, yeah. yeah the, he was that religious... Was Avenger. Yeah, Avenger. Avenger. That yeah. religious assassin dude. So would he be a rogue or a... Do you, do you have rangers? You don't have rangers, do you? We don't have rangers designed yet. You have a bow-fighting fighter, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it would depend on what kind of weapon you wanted to use. Um, one thing... Somebody, would he be a rogue? He might be a rogue, might be a rogue with, like, yeah. with, yeah, with like the, an Avenger theme. Because as an like, Avenger, yeah. I think he, I, I, yeah. I think as a striker type character, yeah. he may end up being a rogue. Or because I mean, the whole idea of that of that of the Avenger was that he was able to come up and he was basically implacable. Yeah. And I wonder if a pile of expertise dice doesn't explain his ability to his assassination yeah. stuff better. Because he could he could. Essentially, swear an oath against you, and then that was it. He was on you. You know what's cool is that he obviously he doesn't have an oath now, but now the oath is just flavor. Sure, he yeah. still has it, and he's still gonna say it. Yeah, he will. But it's pure RP. Oh yeah, he'll he, say it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So 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 let's talk ooh, about that. Ooh, wait a minute. Tell me more. If we're converting to a new edition, is this like a multiple universe thing? And now I didn't kill Will. No. 
his character I and that so. he no. can't hold that against me? No, no, I think we move we move forward. But it's like it's not retcon. You know what I mean? Uh, it's like when you change directors, but you keep the continuity. So in terms of in terms of, free of that. in terms no. of fighters, mm-hmm. um, what are, what are we looking at if we want to try to go for somebody who has a pile of dice to kill? Can we play this now? We want we, we, we want to have a fighter who is who is our Avenger assassin so, type dude. So I mean, the, the the primary bifurcation is between thief. Well, it also depends too because what we'd like to do for a lot of the, the a lot of classes like Avenger is uh, create specialties. Exactly. There's an Avenger specialty. Absolutely. So then you think, so for Will's character, was he, was he more stealthy, or was he more... No, he was base? more chase you so down he and might, kill you. Yeah, I might want to be a fighter. He might want to be a paladin. The um, Now, we don't have the paladin fully designed yet, but that might fit. Like, but how, but how the paladin would be a specialty for fighters? Well, no, the, the paladin would, would be its own class. Oh, okay. But, but then you could take the Avenger specialty for that paladin. There we go. So, there we go. So it's it's kinda, in that divine vertical, yeah, exactly. essentially. You could even be a cleric and take... And I was going to say, I, I think there may be a play for cleric where he doesn't focus on healing and instead focuses on being a super badass. Exactly. Because essentially he was a religious... Avengers are religious zealots. Yep. I mean, I wonder if there isn't a cleric play. Or is, is, there a, is, there a, is there something we can look at for clerics that might have been a good... So, let's see. What, what, we have the Sun Domain, which probably really wouldn't fit. Well, for him, it was a lot, there's a lot of lights and... There's a lot of light and flashing blades and shit. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I mean, for him, like, Sun would be a cool domain, and those beams would be kind of cool for him, too, I think. It'd give him pretty pretty light armor, and he'd be more of a ranged guy. And yeah, nothing with his spells. You could do something like that. I mean, because I, I feel like that would actually fit him pretty well. Because what I'd like to do with the the Avenger specialty is give like the oath ability. Probably yeah, a little more limited because you might be picking like a specific person rather than but but there might be a lesser version of using every fight. The um, but yeah, that might make sense for him. If he wants to kind of stay closer to be that's right you know, for the front line, more back line things like that. Yeah, he 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 definitely wants to he did, but he definitely wants to get. On them, I think. I think. I think that the beam is for him more secondary. I'm just. I'm just wondering in terms. So we have those. You have those domains that you're looking at, as far as like what at wills we're pulling out of that domain. I mean, if you had, did you, where do we? So I have sort of a good person here. Yeah. Like, where can we go on the dark spectrum for clerics? So right now, for we don't. We don't have any of the really sort of like neutral or evil domains. Designed. Oh, not yet. Okay. Yeah, not yet. But but one of the things we can do. I mean, it wouldn't be that much. Like if he's. You know, if he wants to be what the his Avenger, if he's making range attacks, it actually might make sense for him to. Uh, let's see, let me check something here. I keep looking at the wrong files. Um, do we have? Let's see. There was a specialty at one point, kind of like the magic user gave you at will magic. Yeah. That did something similar for divine characters, but I don't see it here. But but it might make sense for him to go fighter or rogue and take that specialty and mix it with the Avenger specialty, especially since he's tenth level. So you have some. Good there we go. Uh, but, but then up. but then we we continue we maintain the divine aspect. Yeah, exactly. For the to, to flesh the rest of the character out. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely see a big pile of I definitely see a big pile of dice in our future. Um, for Will, I think I think that I think he'll love spending those dice. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh man, see, because I, I think I think that with you, there's going to be a lot of Nick damage. And you know, always getting something out of these rolls. But will I see him just dropping handfuls of dice every time he connects? Well, I like the idea of Jim having these spells that he's got memorized. Uh, the idea that he's memorizing stuff that is important to Jim and not necessarily important to the party. You mean like facts? Well, no, just like <laughs> spell. Like you know, in fourth edition, I have all this stuff that was like I had instant friends. Like you know. Oh, 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 Jim can oh, just walk up to oh, somebody and like yeah, glamour yeah, yeah, yeah. them. No, right? no, like, I see. So we're, we're talking about situations where you've taken spell choices yeah, well, that like, are for things that he likes to do. Yeah, he likes to do. And then you're in a situation where you're like, all right, we need the wizard. We need like, fire. What, what can you do? <laughs> uh, I can make friends super quick right now. Really quick. I've got, uh, you know. Basically instantaneously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I can only make one friend. Yeah, illusory doves. Great are happening. <laughs> great value on leather goods. Yeah, <laughs> like he's using up space in his mind. Well, in his arsenal. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, nice. Oh man, I can't wait. I cannot wait to see. Yeah, it. I'm ready to play it. Cool. Well, good. That's good to hear. 